offense has come alive. The Rockies get it in play. Good job of hitting deep. Still going. It is gone. This ball hammered deep right field. It is a home run. And the Rockies continue to beat up. Diamondbacks backs grab the lead. Call strike three. D-backs get the sweep. It looks like somebody's starting to really heat up right now. Deep to left field. At the wall. Goodbye. That was an unbelievable play. The home run parade for the Diamondbacks continues. MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube, pre-game show. YouTube fam, what's going on? It's great to be back with you. Ballpark cam is turned on in the desert. Arizona hosting Colorado to wrap up a three-game set between the D-backs and the Rockies. There's been a late change to the starting pitching matchup. We'll dive into that momentarily. And also, give you some quality workout tips because I got Carlos Pena <laughs> with me, Steven Nelson. That's I, right. I, I, I've never felt more inadequate as a human than when I do Come standing on. next to Los. Come on, this guy's a stud. Don't let him fool you. Come on. Um, listen, not everybody is watching the pregame show right now. Some are going to join later because we're taking them all the way up to first pitch. They want to know when exactly it is, Los. We have a little tool to yeah. help them with that. Yeah, right? I, I, like, I like knowing what pitch is coming. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> the, the, the countdown clock? There it is. That might have been <laughs> our best work yet, Heels, I think, with the timing. Uh, let's show you the, the pitching matchup, Los, because it was supposed to be John Gray going for the Rockies. He's been rolling of late. He was scratched recently, and he's going to head to the injured list with a broken foot. So Tim Melville, who hasn't appeared in a big league game since 2017, he has toned the slab for the Rocks up opposite Mike Leak. Yes, and uh, as a hitter, if I'm in Arizona, I'm thinking to myself, how do you approach somebody? This is a surprise. And uh, what you do is just race your sights and look for your fastball. That's okay. about it. Wentzville High School product from Missouri, same school that produced Ross Detweiler, now with the Chicago White Sox. Melville was drafted by Kansas City in the fourth round back in 2008. Not long before Brandon Crawford and D. Gordon were selected. Mike Leak, he was drafted out of Arizona State, so he's back home, essentially. Uh, so forks up for him. Now, how about the lineups in this contest, Los? This is what we're really locking in on. A lot of star power on the Rocky roster. One of them is absent from today's lineup and Nolan Arenado, but what? still. I know, that's a, that's a, I'm bummed. I am bummed, but we still get Toppy at the top. Trevor Story, Charlie Blackman, McMahon, Garrett Hampson's got speed down there. There is a lot to love about what Colorado has oh, yeah. in the order. I know it has been producing consistently as a team. That's a pitching problem, but that's another conversation. How about Arizona? Gerard Dyson. You know, so as, for as much star power as the Rockies have, right, in their big three in Arenado, Story, and Blackman, the Diamondbacks have three sneaky studs, okay? Eduardo Escobar. Oh, yeah. He's got 100 ribbies in 2019. <laughs> Maybe those names are not as recognizable, but let me tell you, they're really coming into being uh, these stars in the game. We better recognize Nelly. Mm -hmm. And, and Nick Ahmed there in the seven hole, reigning National League Player of the Week. But you want to hone in on the dude in the two hole. Cattell Marte was an all star this year at second base. And you talk to his D back teammates, they rave about his pop, especially from the right side. Switch hitter, of course, incredibly versatile defensively as well. And so I want you to kind of look at this whole picture of Cattell Marte and what he means to this D-back team that is still in the National League wildcard race, mind you. But he's played all over and played exceptionally well without making hardly any mistakes. Center field, second base, shortstop. Yeah. One error, and it happened like last week in center field. Insane. I mean, to say that he is a dynamic player is a total understatement. I mean, he's just hitting the baseball with a lot of power, driving it to all fields. And again, I'm going to show you a little bit of how he goes about his business, all right? Look how smooth he is with his move. Look how early he gets ready from the left side. That nice and slow gather, right? Gathering all his energy. He hangs there for a little bit, and then he just unloads on the pitch. I mean, it's almost like he lifts his leg as the pitcher is lifting his. And he waits and starts drifting towards the area that he's looking for the pitch he wants, and then he just unloads. Look how smooth that is. It doesn't seem like he is at all inhibited at all. I mean, he's getting ready to hit, and he does slightly different from the right side, but same concept. 
Very early leg kick. He's not going to get surprised by the fastball. So he gets ready to hit. How many times do you hear coaches go, get ready to hit? You cannot take that for granted. You can tell Marta, sure does it. He gets going really early, lifts his leg, and now he starts going towards the hitting area and delivers the barrel to the ball. What about this, guys? Playing defense. Come on. Are you kidding me? Out in center field making crazy plays. And then check out this throw right here. This is something that it's, it's <laughs> difficult to do. On the money, an absolute cannon to home plate. But hey, is that all he can do? No. Let's put him in second base. Check out this play. Look at the athleticism. He's going to have to switch, go backwards, really, and get a nice feed to the shortstop. Right and right here. Well, look how heads up this play is a little bit of a run down tax the play right there goes to first double play Just sick. I mean this guy can do it all and then they let's just put him out in shortstop. Why not? Why not? He can still do that as well Nelly. This is how good he is. And you're like wait. He's just a great athlete guys It's not that easy all the different angles. Look at that flip right there. This guy is a true athlete But he needs a lot of work to get that good and Again, one error all year long, and it happened in center field last week. He has been so steady, so dependable, and so versatile. The, the, playing all three of those positions, it is tough to go in and out of that, Los, no? Nelly, it's extremely hard. That's why we cannot take a player like this for granted. That's why I said dynamic is an understatement, okay? In center field, all right, there are balls that are slicing uh, to one side or the other. You have to wait for the ball to be hit. Boom, you're ready. Goes this way. You can go over the shoulder. You saw that unbelievable play that he made over his shoulder. But how about if the ball is hit this way? It has a different spin off of the right hand to bat. This way, the ball is slicing away from you. This way, the ball is hooking towards the left center field area. All right, so center field, yes, a lot of ground to cover. You got to be an athlete. But guess what? He goes over here to second base. How about this? You go from catching five balls and go and get balls in the gap, second base. We're talking about angles. The ball hit off a right-handed batter. It's going to be always slicing away this way. So everything is going this way. Ground ball this to the right side. I have to get it like this. All right. Now a ball hit this way. All right. It's going to be hooking towards left center field very difficult angle you're like okay I played here every day so I just get used to those angles off you know contact no how about when you go here to shortstop this is even probably the hardest position to play in all of baseball right well now it's backwards right now the ball hit this way again it's going to be slicing away from me off the right hand of bat but how about if he hooks one this way you got to go deep over here and look at that throw what I'm saying is, guys, look, it's extremely difficult, Nelly. It's extremely difficult. If we take a player like this for granted, no longer. We're paying attention. This guy is an absolute star. He was in the All-Star game. Mm -hmm. But, boy, I just want to make sure I let everyone know out there that is hard. What he's doing is extremely difficult, and we shouldn't take a player like that for granted ever. Watching him this year has been so much fun, not just for D-back fans, but for baseball fans in general. Shouts to Cattell Marte, and also shouts to Archie Bradley, who has slid into the closer role down in the desert and has been delivering. He's oh, going to yeah. deliver right now with Alexa Dat. Thanks, Stephen. Archie, an interesting season for the Diamondbacks this year. You guys are cruising along in the hunt, and all of a sudden, Zach Greinke gets traded. What was the message? Did you guys have a team meeting, or how did that all unfold for you guys? Uh, yeah, it was weird. You know, it was definitely weird to see Zach go. Um, we really enjoyed Zach here. I, I know I personally did. I enjoyed him on the field, but more off the field. He was uh, he was a really fun guy to be around, and it was definitely a, a strange time to see him go in the middle of the year like that. But. Um, you know, we, we kind of had a little meeting. You know, Mike definitely came down and addressed us and told us some things. And, and the main message was I traded one guy. The rest of you are still here. The, the core group and, and the core players are still intact. And we're going to give you guys a chance to go play and see what you can do. And you guys are expecting Robbie Ray back this weekend. How big of a boost is that for the team? It's real big. Um, Robbie's been a staple in this rotation for the past few years. And, uh, you know, now with Zach being gone, obviously we added Mike Leak. But, you know, I would say Robbie is, is our go-to guy. He's our ace. He's the guy who goes out and, and sets the tone from the first pitch. And uh, we'll be glad to have him back. What can we expect from Mike Leak tonight? You know, you pitched so well at ASU and the fact that he's back here and being able 
able to feel comfortable in uh, Arizona. What does that mean for him? Uh, I think it's a lot. I think it's pretty cool to get to play, uh, you know, where you went to school. You have a lot of friends and family around. And then I think now, you know, last start he, he pitched into the six, and I think he's getting comfortable with our catchers, um, getting comfortable with the league, starting to figure out, you know, how to pitch some of these guys. And, uh, you know, he's a veteran guy. I'm happy to have him and, and excited he's with us. we got six weeks left. What does the grind mean for you personally? It means a lot. Um, you know, everyone everyone gets an offseason, and, and we all enjoy it. But um, from 17 making the playoffs to last year not making the playoffs, I definitely want to be in the playoffs this year. It's, it's not fun going home and just watching it on TV. So I want to be a part of it. I want the D-backs to be a part of it. Love that mentality. You got players weekend coming up this yeah. weekend. Dude, crash landing, you guys fly too much for that to be your players weekend <laughs> game. I've, I've gotten that before. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of a, a little business. I started back home and uh, kind of ditched the Hollywood last name and then trying to promote the business a little bit while also uh, – it's the name of my ranch as well. So kind of a cool thing. I love Players Weekend. I love what MLB does with it, and it's a fun time. Fly safe. Thanks, yeah, Archie. of course. Thank you. <laughs> Steven. Thanks, AD. As we take a, a, a deeper look at Archie Bradley's numbers since becoming the closer, 10 and two-thirds, struck out seven, just seven hits allowed. He has worked in each of the last three days in five of the last seven, so he's been getting his work in. So you wonder if maybe he'll get a day off uh, today against the Rockies. Uh, all right, Los, there are some other games going on in the big leagues right now. So as we continue to wait and get closer to the YouTube game of the week, let's show you the action. Cincinnati, A. Eugenio Suarez, another unheralded star. Yeah, crushes. Oh, Candelita, Jose Iglesias. Did he get that? Wow. Yes, he did. How about that play right there, Nelly? He and Derek Dietrich were signed to minor league deals this past offseason, and they have been vital at various points for Cincinnati. Francisco Mejia, big piece acquired by San Diego in the Brad Hand trade with Cleveland last year. He gets a hold of one. He's starting to swing the bat well. That was far. I mean, <laughs> that was far. That, that, that's a good hitter at small park, but that was far. Uh, let's go to Target Field in Minnesota. The White Sox and Twins. Minnesota atop the Central. The White Sox building to try and compete for it next year. Jose Abreu. He's homered in the first two games of the series. There's a knock. Makes it one nothing Sox. There's another ribby. Off Jake Odorizzi scoring Tim Anderson 2 0 pale hose. Back to Abreu in the third. Lifts it in the air. Shallow right field. Bigger. That's trouble. It did. I mean, you see those, you kind of smell it. So it's going to drop, it's going to drop. And then as the hitter, you're like, thank you, Lord. Oh, how about Lucas Giolito? Seven Ks. And he's got a 4 0 lead to work with. Now we are working in Tampa Bay. One other thing at this point, I think I'm going to have to amend that. Uh, yeah, Heredia makes it two nothing Rays. Oh, let's see, you got a smile on your face, Los. <laughs> They're scrappy, Daddy. They're scrappy. They just keep on coming. A uh, base is loaded here. Now Seattle have been playing good ball of late, and they refuse to go away. They got some guys getting hot, and there the M's take the three two lead. Kevin Kiermaier and try and even things up. He does. Not only that, he gives him the lead, Los. And Tampa Bay is extremely uh, excited to have him back and healthy, man. He could be a force in that lineup and for sure in the defense. Jesus Aguilar, they're hoping he's a force in the lineup coming over from Milwaukee ahead of the trade deadline. So 5-3 Rays in the seventh, 4-2 Reds in the eighth, and 4-0 Chicago in the sixth inning. So you're looking at Minnesota is Minnesota and Tampa are the two interesting teams that we just saw in those updates. So the Twins are atop the American League Central and they're three games in front of Cleveland going into today and the wild card race has all, all sorts of intrigue Los, because you have two franchises in Oakland and Tampa their price per victory you know given their payroll is incredibly impressive to be at 72 and 73 wins respectively. It is very impressive and they thrive on that as a matter of fact they're very proud of the fact that they do a lot with the resources that they do have mm. and Oakland we're used to seeing the A's making runs in the second half now they want to not only get to the postseason but move on get to the DS uh, we got Mike Leak getting loose in Arizona he's starting today's game we'll throw out the first pitch 
Coming up in just a few moments, you see the countdown clock, the upper left part of your viewing screen. Now you're going to get to view what has happened up to this point, the first two games of the series. Final three of the season between the Diamondbacks and the visiting Colorado Rockies. Five no-hit innings. Up the wall. Touch him on, Marte. Carson Kelly, stay fair. Let's go. Oh, we've been this way all year. You know, we never give up. Say goodbye. Boy, Nick Ahmed, have a year. Game number 1,000 includes a two-run home run. Of course it does. On a triple by Escobar. Let's get the baseball. The D-backs seek a sweep of the Rockies and a fourth straight victory in Arizona, hanging around, hanging around in the National League wild card race, four games back currently of the Chicago Cubs for that second and final wild card spot. Arizona did a lot of reshuffling at the deadline, Los, yeah. but they didn't wave the white flag. They didn't, but they had to make a decision because you want to make sure you capitalize on what you are able to do so mm -hmm. that you don't look back and regret it later. And they're in a position that, hey, we're going to still fight, but I also have to make sure that I get the most that I can get right now at the deadline. All right, let's play a little game with you, Los. Your first time on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube pregame show. Like and subscribe. I'm going to throw some things your Interesting. way. Interesting. And you're going to tell me if you agree with you, you like it and you subscribe to that. You agree with that. And let's okay. begin with the trade deadline move. Arizona sending Zach Grinke to the Houston Astros for a handful of prospects and uh, obviously a ton of money. That's a good trade for the D-backs. Like and subscribe? Yes, I, I like and subscribe because, uh, number one, they're getting ready for, for the future right there. They didn't go away. You know, the, the deadline didn't go away. They didn't capitalize. I know they're in the position where they can still go for it, but I think they got the best of all the worlds. They're still fighting, yet they set themselves, they set themselves off very well for the future. On this, uh, yeah, and yeah I'm subscribing. Yes, liking and subscribing, thumbs up to that. Yes. Now let's look at topic number two. Nolan Arenado, the Colorado Rockies, is the best third baseman, not just in the division, not just <laughs> in the National League, in all of baseball. Thumbs up, man. Yeah? 100%, this guy is an absolute Animal. I mean, number one, he number one, he picks everything at third base. Okay, it's he looks insane. So, he looks so easy. But too. watch this, man. You know what those are, right? Those are placatas. And then right here, <laughs> that's what I was talking about. Man, are you kidding me? Every single night, he's going out there and making an unbelievable play. And when I ask him about it, he's like, I don't know. I just I just catch the ball and throw it. I'm like, okay, great. You know, but you are a highlight reel every single night. Oh, it's unquestionably one of the best. Carlos Pena is saying the best. He's liking and subscribing to that theory. How about Arizona and Colorado? Obviously, D-backs are still in the postseason picture this year. Uh, they do have a lot of leapfrogging to do to actually get there. Colorado, it's been an incredibly disappointing campaign in 2019. I don't think I'm offending the Rockies. Everybody in that clubhouse knows that. Arizona will return to the postseason before the Rockies do. So it could be this year, it could be next year, it could be the year after that. I, I got to go thumbs down on that. Oh, you're believing? You I, I mean, I just think that the Rockies have a, a, a better core, you know, and, and that sooner or later, if pitching responds, right, if they're able to pitch, that Colorado will be in the postseason before the D-backs. Even though the D-backs are in it this year, they got a lot of work. It's not likely. Mm. Yeah, no, there's a long way to go. It's just been it's been tough to see the, the Rockies rotation. Well, today, obviously, John Gray with the late scratch. He was supposed to start. He's got a broken foot. Kyle Freeland has taken not just one step back, but maybe five steps back after a phenomenal 2018. But if those guys get clicking again at the same time, Marquez, I, I, I understand you what you're saying. You know what I mean? I under, totally understand. This last one is really interesting. The all-time teams for Colorado and Arizona. <laughs> Rockies... D-backs, let's say the Rockies beat Arizona. Do you like and subscribe to that? I like it. You, you know why? It's because they have a lot of thump in that lineup. We talk about Todd Helton. We can go back to Galarraga. Let's go Larry back to Bichette, Larry Walker. And hey, don't don't, don't sleep on Nafi Perez. <laughs> or Vinny Castilla. Vinny Castilla is an absolute beast. Okay, guys, come on. I mean, you know I oh. love going deep, so this lineup can go deep. So you went pro Placata, but yes. you're, that lineup, despite having to face Randy Johnson, yeah. Kurt Schilling, Zach Grinke, that is a formidable oh, rotation. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I knew what I was up against, but I'm still going to go with the Placata team. Yeah. Yeah. The, the team Placata. We'll get them, man. All you need is one. You can uh, go one for four with a three-run homer, you win a ball game. Uh, Los and I are actually going to be in a booth for 
the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube coming up in, in a little bit. Right now, we're in the dugout in Studio 42. Jeremy Affel in our office bay, Eric Burns. They're calling the game with Rich Waltz. Steven, Carlos, listen, dudes. I've been trying to tell you about a guy by the name of Carson Kelly for a long time, and neither one of you guys wanted to listen. Can you believe that, Jeremy? I can, actually. My goodness. I mean, I, I shared office with these guys. I'm trying to tell them. Carson Kelly, Carson Kelly, Cattel Marte, Cattel Marque, Eduardo Escobar, and nothing out of my office, Bates. Incredible. And here are these three guys killing it for the D-backs, and one of the reasons they're still in contention. Yeah, I mean, they're, what are they, 100 RBIs on the Escobar? The kids had 100 RBIs last night. He's doing really well. Their offense is amazing. Uh, but they are playing Denver. They are playing the Rockies, another good offense, to be honest with you. But what they don't have is good pitching. And I think with the Rockies right now, they have no back end. They had a closer, a big-name closer that's lost his job, Davis, seventh, eighth inning guy now. They're, they're, uh, uh, they're, they have a, they had a, their guy they wanted in in the closing role, has a blood clot. He's been out for a little bit. He's out for the rest of the season. You got a rotational issue where you just don't know what you're getting. And if you don't have pitching, especially in this division with playing the Diamondbacks, playing the Dodgers, all offensive teams, playing in Denver. If you don't have pitching in Denver, you're not going to have it. What does it take to get great pitching in Denver? Because you've been a part of a team that yeah. had it. Yeah, I was. And we had veteran guys come in, and they didn't even bring us back after 07, which shocked everybody because we found a bullpen. All of a sudden, the Rockies found a bullpen with Latroy Hawkins, Brian Fuentes, myself, Guys, the Matt Hurgis back end guys, and they didn't bring back Latroy and I at all. And we didn't understand that. And now you'd see what happens. You have to find guys that'll want to pitch in Colorado. Sometimes you have to overpay. Sometimes you have to figure out what the strengths are in Denver. Guys that are not afraid to pitch in, you have to pitch in. If you don't pitch in in Denver, the guys get really big swings and they want to just clobber the baseball. When, when, when offenses come into Colorado, it's a fight to the bat rack. You know that. It was a, if you're in a slump, you're like, when are we playing Colorado? Because I need to get a couple hits. If you got guys that are scared to pitch in Colorado who cannot pitch in effectively and don't know how to throw a breaking ball in that air quality without barometric pressure or gravity, as I called it, you won't get it. You have to get guys that understand how to pitch in Colorado. That's tough to do. Once you have them, you cannot let them go. And I think that's been a problem with the Rockies. They have not found consistency in that area. Well, hopefully we'll see some consistent high-flying action because, of course, us here at YouTube, we root for the analysis, and we like action. Steven, Carl. <laughs> from the desert, nature, friends, and full sins. Jeremy Affelt, I'm Burns. See ya. <laughs> Be water, Burnsy. Also, that is not true. Carson Kelly is an Oregon kid committed to the Ducks. I yeah. came over the Goldschmidt deal. We gave love to Cattell Martin. Yeah, we did. He's trying to get us in trouble with the D-backs fans. We love you guys. You know what? As we get it, we get into the the YouTube blooper reel. Maybe we need to add some Burnsy in Studio oh, yeah. 42. We got plenty of those. Instead, we're starting last night in Minnesota. The squirrel on the loose, on the field, delayed the game a few times. This is two consecutive nights. And he even nutmegged Max Kepler. I mean, right here, going across the, the pitch line, and, uh, things flying. Uh, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> what is that two points? That's two right. points. <laughs> well, field goal would be three, but I get what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> and, and on Monday, foul ball, catch by the fan, Yo, how about the lettuce, though, Los? Oh, man, that's... Whoa! What's going on there? Yeah. Maybe we can sell Burnsy into that type of... I mean, he's almost yeah. there. I mean, he lets it go a little bit more. Though. Based on that catch, it was OBJ, Weird Al Yankovic, and <laughs> Slash's love child. Uh, check out this pitch from Sean Kelly. Just a bit up top, right? Even outside. <laughs> just a bit, just a bit. Hey, man, that just slipped out of his hand. That was a late, oh, was a late call time. On to Tampa. Jimon Choi. Oh, that, you got caught by surprise after this foul ball. <laughs> you never expect that to happen from a left-handed hitter. You just never do. How about that? This is great. Earlier this week, Yasiel Puig imitating a viral stance from the Little League World Series Davies or Donez. And Puig spoke about this on MLB Network. I saw that somebody sent to me and said, if you do that and the free speech, I go and give him some money to the Sherry Foundation. You could go and help the Warhol Foundation and, and help more kids. I say, okay, what is taking? I oh, got really? the pitch. If somebody he's seizing, he's getting mad and giving, throw the ball. I go into a free base. I need to respect him, but it's something for my foundation, and that's the reason I do it. 
Yeah, the wild horse. That was awesome. Are you riding with the wild horse, Yasiel Puig? Yeah, man. If he would have gone deep there, that would have been his new stance. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Can you, know you imagine I mean? how, yeah. how nuts the internets would have gone? That would have been all over YouTube. Carlos Pena, Stephen Nelson, we're coming to the end of the show here. Um, before we go, we do want to give our viewers another special chat. Trevor Story, a stud shortstop for the Rockies. He, he spoke to Alexa Dat. Steven, thank you. Trevor, this core group of players has had some success over the last few years. On paper, it feels like this team should be in the mix, but what can you pinpoint as the reason why this team has not been able to get there this season yet? Um, yeah, we feel like, you know, we feel like we're a pretty talented team and, um, you know, kind of like you said, you know, our core group of guys really comes to work every day and, you know, I feel like we can say that for our whole team, but, um, you know, I feel like it's just been, you know, that there's a couple of big pitches or, or, you know, big at bats in a game that, um, you know, we haven't, we haven't been able to win those at bats and, um, you know, momentum is a big thing in this game and I think that, you know, we, we just haven't been winning those pitches and it's been, uh, you know, it's, it just comes down to, to, to those little things and those little battles within the game and, you know, we haven't been really getting it done. Got to watch out for that fly, by the way. <laughs> So how hopeful are you for the future of this team? You've got Nolan Arenado locked up long term. You've got Desmond and Murph under contract next year. What's the future provide? Um, yeah, you know, a lot of excitement. I think um, we've been in the, uh, you know, the postseason the last two years. And, um, you know, we we feel like we have a really good team. And, um, you know, obviously very talented, but, uh, you know, being able to to win consistently is, is, is going to be the challenge. And, um, you know, with the names that you said, you know, we're, we're in really good hands, I think, with veterans, you know, in that sense. And, um, you know, we're, we feel like, you know, so, sooner rather than later, we're, we're going to be, um, you know, one of the best teams. Speaking of veterans, you've got Nolan Arenado there. You guys, man in the left side of the infield. What do you learn from him on a daily basis? So much. He's, uh, you know, he, he's such a professional, you know, in the way he goes about his business. Um, you know, he's the hardest working guy. Um, you know th that we have out there, and you know, I think it shows in his, in his pregame. You know his cage work, the way he prepares his body. Um, really, you know, I've learned so much from him. He he probably doesn't even know it. You know, I'm always watching him, and and uh, I think we push each other on a daily basis. So it's a uh, it's a blessing, you know, to have him as a teammate, and you know, it's it's pretty fun watching him too. Yeah, you guys are a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I can speak for all fans, who are big fans of you guys. So. We have players weekend coming up this weekend, and you got True on the back of your jersey. True story. Is there anything behind that? Yeah, uh, you know, it's just kind of, um, you know, our, our uh, Vinny Castilla, you know, a former Rockies legend. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's around the team a lot, and he, uh, he, he gave me that nickname. I think it was my first big league spring training. I was just hitting in the cage, and you know, he said that's the true story right there. So it just kind of stuck. You know, I liked it, and um, that's what he's been calling me ever since. So um, that's where it came from, and yeah, I thought I'd, I'd throw it on the back of the jersey this time. All right, we're looking forward to seeing it on the back of your jersey. True story, Trevor yeah. Story. Thanks so much for joining us. This yeah. fly won't leave us alone, so it's time right. for us to go. <laughs> thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate it, AD and Trevor Story. I mean, gosh, 2018 was ridiculous. 2019, it hasn't been too shabby. 296, <laughs> 935 OPS, 28 dingers, 91 runs scored. I'll tell you another thing to check out is that shortstop's in the lockdown, right? Ahmed and Trevor Story, the top two in the league right there on, on defensive runs saved. Mm -hmm. Trevor Story with 15, and only Ahmed has more defensive runs saved than Trevor Story. Wow. This guy's pretty good too, right? Charlie Blackman, Chuck Nasty. Chuck Nasty in the house. What would happen if you tried to rock the rat tail and the, the mullet and the beard like Chuck? I can't. You, you can't? There's no way. I, I, I can't. Only he, I mean, have you seen him stroll down the red carpet? If you saw him doing the All-Star game, <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. He is batting third in the Rockies lineup today. No Nolan Arenado um, and no John Gray for the Rockies. Uh, Gray was supposed to be the starter. Broke his foot. So Tim Melville. What a story here, Los. We haven't seen him in the big leagues in uh, two years now. Yeah, this is a really good moment for him. Getting an opportunity right here to do what he wants to do best, which is just go out there and pitch in the big leagues. Yeah, and he gets to be on the this hill. This is just his seventh career game. And this is the lineup he's going to be facing for the Arizona Diamondbacks. A sweep is on the line for Arizona here. They've won three in a row, two straight against the Rockies. 
and they're trying to hang around in the wild card race. Do, do you believe in this team enough? Like, do you think they'll get there, or is it going to be too many teams to leapfrog quickly? It's going to be extremely difficult for them to just uh, leapfrog over everybody. Uh, we have more MOE Game of the Week live on YouTube coming your way, including the Braves and Rockies next. But today, it's the Rockies, it's the D-backs. Rich Waltz, Jeremy Affelt, Eric Burns, and Alexa Dat have the call. In the Valley of the Sun today, temperatures should get to 114 before the day is done. It's a great day to come on inside Chase Field with the AC on and ready to go. Our MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. We're in the National League West. Game three, three games set. Colorado Rockies, Arizona Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks have won the first two. Hi, everybody. I'm Rich Waltz, and welcome to Phoenix. All right, the Arizona Diamondbacks are retooling or refurbishing, but they're trying to do it without blowing it all up. So there's no Grinky, there's no Goldschmidt, there's no LeMahieu, there's no Corbin. But you know what? They are four games out in the wild card. Somehow they've kept afloat in the race. The Colorado Rockies have been decimated by injuries, especially in their starting rotation. That will affect today's starter as well. But still, they have one of the most fearsome offenses and guys who can really thump it. That's the backdrop for our MLB Game of the Week on YouTube. Okay, some things to know. Let's do some YouTubing, kids. You can stream it live, and it's free. Six more terrific games, end of August and into September. Two million other fans are already on the MLB YouTube channel. You can join that if you want. You don't have to to watch the game, but you do get a lot of cool things as well. I am joined inside the booth by Jeremy Affelt and Eric Burns. Let's dive right into the Diamondbacks. All those names I mentioned, Burnsy, how are the Diamondbacks still in this race? Well, their offense has been incredible, and it starts with the dude that's got 100 stakes right now. That's right, 1-0-0. Zero, zero. Eduardo Escobar, are you kidding me? Well, we had a chance to sit down with Tori LaBelle earlier today, and he was saying that he found something in his swing this year where he's all of a sudden just catching the ball a tick out front. So these rollover top spin sort of line drives that he was hitting are now leaving the ballpark. Could tell Marte, what a fantastic young player this oh, is. Man, this guy is an absolute athlete. He stands up there nice and tall, creates leverage, and is just gone banging. You see the 154 hits. That's right, leads the National League. How many at home could have told us that? But could tell Marte has been huge. One of the emerging stars in the National League is their catcher, the young one, Carson Kelly. Had a chance to spend some time with Carson Kelly in spring training, and he said, Bernsey, I'm ready to go. I just need an opportunity to play every day. I'm like, yeah, sure. Good luck, kid. Well, guess what? Look at this. Since May 4th, 18 homers. The OPS well over 900. He has been fantastic. Unfortunately, not in the lineup today, but these are three key reasons why the Diamondbacks have had so much success and are still in contention at this point. Okay, now for the Rockies. Jeremy, we expect you to match the energy over there. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, let's talk about uh, these Rockies. The starting rotation has been decimated. They've lost so much talent there. They're not in the race right now, but they still have two guys you have to deal with, Nolan Arenado and Trevor Story. Yeah, the dark cloud over the Rockies is pitching, but the sunshine is the left side of that infield. You, in the leading the way is Arenado. Since 2015, second most in, in Major League Baseball in, 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 in homers. ML 500, 600 RBIs in Major League Baseball. The guy, since he's come up, has hit bomb after bomb after bomb, driving in 100 ribbies a year, 40 homers. We call him the Hoover at third base. Hoover vacuum. The guy sweeps up everything. He's a complete package Hall of Famer. I think Story. a complete package here with Trevor Story, both with the bat and with the glove. He has been, and, and, and Story's a guy with Tulowitzki leaving, they didn't know who they were going to have. This guy's come up, hit 300, and he's hitting 28 homers this year. He's hit, he's catching with he's catching with Arenado. This left side of the infield has got so much power and so much RBI potential. If they could get some pitching in here, they can win a lot of ball games. So with a month and a half to go with these guys, where do you think they're going to end up? So we did a little math, we did a little projecting, looking back to their seasons past. The pace for Arenado, 40 homers. An OPS of 918, and look at the OPS for Story at 935. 
and 36 home runs. But the challenge for the Rockies, now that they're out of the race in this last month and a half, is how do they keep grinding? How do they play the upsetter in this postseason race? With more on that, here's our Alexa Dat. Thank you guys. Excited to be on the sidelines for this YouTube broadcast. So I'm going to have stories from both teams. Start with the Colorado Rockies who haven't quite put together the season that this team would have liked. And with six weeks left to go, they wanted to create more of a positive vibe as they grind it out here for the rest of the season. So they created one of the best rallying cries we've seen this season, Las Cucarachas. We were first introduced to it last week when Nolan Arenado hit that walk-off, but come to find out it actually started in the minors. Yonder Alonso, Drew Weeks, Jonathan Daza all put together what they wanted to create was a positive mentality for this group. Well, Alonso brought it up to the bigs and it absolutely caught storm. Rookie DJ Johnson was rocking this shirt in the clubhouse today when I talked to Garrett Hansen. He said, this is one of the best things that could happen to this team. It creates a vibe of unity and with so much time left in the season, we really need to get something where everyone could get on board. They have done that so well. This team has one of the worst records in baseball since June 30th. They've gone 13 and 30. So they are looking for anything to try and keep them in a more positive mindset. Guys. All right, Alexa, nice to have you along. Good stuff down there. Are you ready for this? National League West. Diamondbacks trying to stay in the wild card race, and the Rockies trying to take a bite out of the snakes. There's a line drive left field, base hit. Here comes the winning run. Carson Kelly delivers. For Kelly, his first career walk off. Oh, he hit a screamer. There was no chance for anybody to get it. Oh, what a catch that was! Ian Desmond with a stellar grab. That's one center fielder robbing another. I'm not sure that the ball was going to get over the fence, but that was a tremendous catch. Swing and a drive way out of here. Peralta! Oh, boy, did he crush that one, and we're tied at two. Shallow right. That won't do it. And the ball falls! The winning run scores, and the Diamondbacks do do it. Patel Marte walks it off and drops the curtain on this dramatic finish. This ball is hit to left center field and deep and it is gone. How about that? Hit number 1,000 will be remembered for Nolan. And one of the best players in baseball is having a night. Arnado backhand. He's going to go for a double play and he's going to end the game. The spectacular double play turned by Arenado. How many third basemen can do that? Oh my goodness, Dyson, Marte, Peralta. Back to back to back. And they make it three for three. Tony Walters, three hits in the day, drives into left field. Hoffman ready to tag. Wilkerson makes the catch, the tag, the throw home. It's offline. Rockies win it. Tony Walters with a sack fly. Who got it? Gerard Dyson taking a home run away from John Peterson, taking a robbery away from Tim LoCastro. Take a good look. You will see it for A grand slam from Desmond. Ian Desmond stays on it and sends it the opposite way. It's a crowded field in the National League wild card standings. Of course, the Nationals and the Cubs have a piece of that right now. Mets and Phillies two back, Brewers three and a half back, and look at the Diamondbacks, four back, a win today, and they will have swept the Rockies, and they've got some big road games coming up. Arizona at Milwaukee and at San Francisco this next week. Guys, it, I know it's not easy. They've got to climb over three teams to get a piece. But it's doable for these Diamondbacks. There's time. It is doable. I, 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 it, the Rockies in 2007 were out seven. Or were out seven games. Came back. Giants in 2010 were down seven and a half games going to September. Came back and won the last game. It's doable. You have to pitch. You have to hit. But it's definitely. You get hot at the right time and play the right teams. It can happen. The latest percentages actually have them at 15. Uh, that's a much bigger number being four back than I thought. And one of the reasons why is the upcoming schedule. They're going to have a chance to go against St. Louis at, towards the very end of the year. They're going to have a chance to go up against the New York Mets. They play Cincinnati in there. Uh, and so long as they're able to win the games they're supposed to win, be it San Diego, be it Miami, this team has a legitimate shot 
well, let's call it a 15% shot, right? <laughs> Of going to the postseason. A legitimate 15%. And the Rockies have a shot at, at being a pain in the neck for everybody trying to get to the postseason. Here's their lineup today. Ramel Tapia, the left fielder. Trevor Story's at short. Nolan Arenado gets the day off. Charlie Blackman had the night off last night except for a pinch hit. And Blackman is in the three spot. Ryan McMahon moves over to third. Yonder Alonso's at first base. Young Garrett Hampson is at second. Jonathan Daza in center. Dom Nunez, young catcher, gets a start in the eighth spot. And Tim Melville is going to start on the mound for the Colorado Rockies. Mike Leak takes the ball for the Diamondbacks. And Leak takes aim at the Rockies. Start number four as a Diamondback. Leak started the year in Seattle. He's made 25 starts. And Rymel Tapia. The left fielder Trevor Story Charlie Blackman will follow for the Rockies and in the left field that's a base hit and Tapia around first he'll hold there and a good start for Colorado who was playing from behind all night last night Arizona an 8 7 win despite uh, the 31st homer from Arenado Diamondbacks had some big hits Eduardo Escobar had a two run triple Nick Ahmed with a homer. And here is Story now. We showed you the gaudy numbers he has and the projections of where he'll end up. So no Arenado, but still plenty of thump with Story, Blackman, McMahon, Alonzo in this Colorado lineup. Well, the shift's over for one. Yeah, yeah. Ground, ground ball, the shortstop, and granted it was hit hard, but would that be frustrating as a pitcher? I'm an anti-shift guy. Like, I, I, I mean, I, 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 certain guys, yes, but a guy like Atapia, I'm sorry, that is a tough matchup for Leak to be against because he's a strike thrower. This guy's a slap hitter. He's a back control guy. To shift on a guy like that, he can punch through those shifts all the time. Like, that didn't surprise me what he did right there. Story takes down. We asked Bud Black actually about Tapia, and in his remarks about him, he said, look, in our organization, everybody loves home runs and fly balls and all that. Still in our organization, we're teaching guys to use the field to, to try to what you just said, beat the shift or or get to the point where you're not shiftable. That's right. And the only way to keep them from shifting and to get rid of the shift is teach hitters how to hit through the shift. There's some guys like this guy hitting right now. I don't pay you to hit singles, man. I'm expecting you to put up 30 homers. And so I want to swing for power. You can shift more on this guy maybe because you're not paying him. But a guy like the, the Tapia, I, I don't even know why you'd shift on that guy. Makes no sense to me. Story is following up what was a monster 2018. He's been an all star the last two seasons. And Leak, who is not a velocity guy, his average fastball is 88, which in Major League Baseball these days is at the very low end of the spectrum. And he's going to mix and match. That's what he'll do. He's going to, he, they got him to pitch. And you're seeing, yeah, he's 88. He's look. There's only four guys that throw slower than him. He he doesn't care. He kind of throws a little slower curveballs. He adds in some tracks. The tough thing is, is you get rid of a guy like Grinky, you got to bring in a guy like Leak, and he's now your veteran guy. There's only four guy. The other four guys are the rookies this year. So for him to be your veteran, he's got he's got a big job cut out for him. I remember when Leak was this fresh-faced rookie Cincinnati. pitching for the Cincinnati Reds out of Arizona State. Now look at the grizzly veteran. Yeah, no fear either, ever. Story into left field. That's a hit. And so well, a pair of singles. Well, there's a guy that. Look, I don't want to get into it too much and start harping on the shift this early, but I'm totally with Athel right here. The first one, Tapia, hits a ground ball to short, a hard ground ball line drive thing, a shortstop where the shortstop would normally be playing and has right. for the past 150 years. Now, this dude, I would be playing in the hole. Now, we don't have all this statistical information. That's the thing about this game. But that would be the one you would think would be shifted over. Yeah. And you would bring the second baseman almost right above second base to drop him down for the double play. And you put that shortstop way in the hole, but. You didn't. It's well, cost him. Right. You're really going. There's a good look at, at, to see how the Diamondbacks are playing Charlie Blackman. Blackman had the night off for most of the night last night, did pinch hit. Which a shift for me against Blackman will make sense because he is a top hand rollover to the infield guy. He hits the ball pretty hard in the air. He can hit the he can shoot the ball into the gaps. But he, if he does hit the ball on the ground, he's going to roll it over a lot. 
over there. He doesn't hit a lot of ground balls the left side of the infield, and you have double play potential. But I don't really like the shifts on the first two guys they've had working. Tori Lavello in his third year, the skipper of the Diamondbacks. UCLA Bruin, Rich. That's right. Pyramid of success up the middle. Oh! That's in the center field. That's a hit. Tapia around third. He's going to score. Story ends up at third. And Charlie Blackman rolls a single. So three ground balls, three base hits. Yeah, we're trying to teach kids these days to get the ball in the air. Ground balls are out. We've heard that around baseball, but apparently not here today. But even Leak pulled his glove back there. He wouldn't have got to it anyway, but he pulled his glove back there, fully expecting that second baseman to be right there, and, and he wasn't because they were shifted. But that ball right there is a ball up the middle where, hey, man, it goes either way there. You, you, any ball going up the middle, you, you got you to gotta know that you got to tip your hat to the hitter in that situation. This is a strike thrower. He's going to throw a lot of strikes. You're going to be ready for a lot of action today in this game. This is a good young player and a guy you're going to hear a lot about in the years to come. And that's Ryan McMahon, the 24 year old out of Southern California. Football and baseball at modern day, and that's one of the great high schools in this country, especially for college football talent. And he was a quarterback, correct? That's, that's a long line of guys that were quarterbacks there that went on to great things from Matt Liner, Matt Barkley. Colt Brennan was a. Great quarterback in college as well. Colt Brennan, Brent Brennan, they're actually cousins. Brent Brennan is now the head coach at San Jose State University. Good friend of mine. Actually, was at a party at Brent Brennan's house That's after I just signed with the Oakland A's, and I ran into this dude by the name of Tom Brady. Up the middle, backhanded, knocked down Marte. Can he get the out? He does. A run will score. Stories across. McMahon gets an RBI and the Rockies are off to a 2 nothing start. So I run into this Brady character and I hadn't seen him since high school and he'd been off playing football at Michigan. So he's like his third year in at Michigan taking three snaps to see the replay right here. At least they were finally able to get it out on one of these ground balls. But conventional way of doing it really just smack it over to the guy short. <laughs> just a little shuffle. He's six four. So I go ahead. And I'm like, Tom, look, dude, hey, great to see you. How you been? How's the quarterback thing going? He's like, ah, Bernsey, you know, it's, I think I'll be getting a little more playing time next year. I'm like, hey, bud, you got to quit football. <laughs> you got to play baseball. And I was saying it had nothing to do with him and his football, and he was <laughs> obviously an unbelievable quarterback, gone on to be arguably the greatest player in the history of the NFL. Well, your heart but Tom Brady was that good of a baseball player that I believed in his ability that much that go ahead play football but you still need to be playing baseball which he did not do at Michigan. Well your heart was in the right place. Yeah. I think he made the right choice. <laughs> now, you saw Yonder Alonso shortened to bunt the the shift has got three infielders on the right side with one remaining on the left side Alonso showed bunt and the counts two and zero. Oh. Apparently we found our theme here in the first inning. Yeah, <laughs> the shift. Right away. Chopper out there, and the turn is in time. Work and the perfection. Diamondbacks get a double play, but the Rockies get on the board first, and they do it with three straight hits and a ground ball out. And they're up to a 2-0 start here in the final game of this three-game set. Diamondbacks won the first two. This would be game three on YouTube. Game of the week. And now you've got the Diamondbacks who are now a game over. And for the Diamondbacks, it's been a roller coaster of a season. I mean, they've been hot for a week at a time and then stone cold for a week at a time. Tori Lovello in his lineup, giving Christian Walker and Carson Kelly an off day. Nick Ahmed became the second Arizona player to capture. National League Player of the Week honors in 2019, joining his teammate Eduardo Escobar. Nick is just so steady. Two run double for Nick Ahmed. Exactly what you needed right there. Nick Ahmed ripped that ball to center field. Ahmed drives another one deep to center field. And that ball's gone. Nick Ahmed ties it up. Just banged out where Bambi lives. Looks like we're seeing that more and more often with Nick Ahmed. Nick Ahmed in the series has doubled. He's hit two home runs and now he's tripled. Ahmed.
Ahmed busted it out of the batter's box, and he had double in mind. Nick Ahmed, he did it again. We're tied. Oh my goodness, he ripped that ball. Gone. Nick Ahmed, he has homer now in five of his last seven games. When you subtract to Paul Goldschmidt, you need everybody else to pick it up, and Ahmed certainly has done that. Here's the Diamondbacks lineup. Gerard Dyson's in center, Patel Marte at second. Eduardo Escobar, he and Marte, the two switch hitters there in two and three. David Peralta, the veteran, hits cleanup. Jake Lamb is at first. Josh Rojas, a rookie in right field. Ahmed at short. Alex Avila, the veteran behind the plates. Leak is in the nine spot. And the story for the Rockies was, this was a John Gray start. But John Gray has been put on the 60-day injured list with a foot injury. He's out for the rest of the year. And Tim wow. Melville has been called up from Triple A. Melville has not started in the big leagues since exactly two years ago. His last appearance in the big leagues was in September of 2017. He's been pitching in the minor leagues. He started the season pitching for the Long Island Ducks, made two starts, then to Albuquerque. 17 starts there, a 10 and 5 record, and an ERA of about five and a half. And Dyson goes after the first pitch and pops it up. And story is there. So, guys, it all points towards uh oh, John Gray, who'd been pitching well, is out. And that fits in the theme that the Rockies have had all their pitching injuries. Melville comes up, hasn't thrown in a big league game in two years. The Rockies have given him a 2 0 lead. What are the dynamics that are working here? Well, one, you don't want your leadoff guy to swing first pitch out the gate when you're down two nothing, and you haven't seen this guy before. So, I, I, but you know, I, I think it's an interesting scenario for this kid coming in, and and he has pitched in the big leagues before, like you're saying, and, and it got some bad news, obviously, about Gray. But they're looking for this kid to throw strikes. I just want you coming up to throwing strikes. Trust us, we got this. Trust the catcher. Pound the strike zone, give me some innings, and we'll try to spot you some runs. And, and he's in kind of a good spot right now to relax a little bit and just throw strikes. Marte takes a strike. The counts one and one. Tough to relax against Cattell Marte. But Melville, a 29 year old out of Missouri, originally a fourth round pick of the Royals back in 2008. Eric Burns, how much of the no one has seen this guy will work in his favor? Uh, a little bit. I, I think the pitcher always has the advantage at the beginning. At the same time, it's not like he's lighting up the radar gun, so he's out there throwing what I would consider under hitting speed, topping out about 90 miles per hour, the 84 mile per hour changeup. There's not a ton to his repertoire, but everything that Bud Black told us in the pregame meeting is that he's a strike thrower. He's going to go after guys, and he's been there before, so he should not be intimidated by the situation. And honestly, you have nothing to lose right here. Nothing. He, he's been brought up. He's had a bunch of different scenarios. He's been in independent ball. He's been all these places. He's not coming in here thinking, oh my goodness, I better throw up an unbelievable start or, or I'm going back down. He's run the gauntlet and he's almost going to come up here and be like, you know what? I'm going to give everything I got. Whatever happens, happens. That's actually a positive for the Rockies in this situation, especially if you're spotting him some runs early, knowing that, th that this guy's going to go out there. He's got nothing. He, there's nothing for him to think about but throw strikes and give it my best. And it, it could end up working out for him. Parts of 11 years in the minor leagues. And his 2 2 is in the air to center field. It's Jonathan Daza out there. And he makes the catch. Now, look, the, the news was awful with John Gray's foot injury to the 60 day injured list. He's done for the year. But the news wasn't great last night. A struggling Kyle Freeland. Finally looked like his 2018 self last night and he suffered a groin injury and came out of the game. He's probably going to the injured list. They're still taking their time with with that injury. But I mean look you've lost Tyler Anderson. The rotation's been a, a mess injury wise all year. And it's just another another two things that have happened within 24 hours to and, this ball club and groins aren't like a two week deal. If it's a groin pull it, it, it's a it's almost like a six week oblique type deal unless you can wrap it up. I mean it, it's going to be uh, a tough road for these Rockies here uh, with their rotation. All right this was last night and this was Freeland. Hmm. 
That's not a tweak. I pulled groins. Deep left center. Off the wall. Daza will play it. Eduardo Escobar. Dude, he was moving dirt. Yeah. Right? He was flying around them bags. What an addition he has been here, not only acquiring him last year in July, but then signing him to a three year contract. He's driven in 100 runs. He's a doubles machine. Yeah, this is nuts, man. I mean, I never thought Eduardo Escobar would be the hitter he's become. I mean, he is a bona fide superstar. He's got 100 stakes in the bag already. He's got the six shooters out. <laughs> Keep doing you. About to hit his 30th homer. Now that only it's only happened 10 times in Major League history that a switch hitter has gone 20, 20, and 10. The last to do it was Jimmy Rollins in 2007. MVP year. Yeah. For him. Yeah. By the way. Great call. I mean. David Peralta now against Tim Melville. Peralta has had a real nice series. Five of nine, two doubles. A triple and is knocked in three. And of course, his story a great one in perseverance. A guy who had two severe shoulder injuries as a pitcher decided to try to come back the hard way as a position player. Did so independent leagues. Diamondbacks saw him, liked him, signed him, and he's been. A key cog in this uh, ball club the last uh, six, seven years. I mean, you're hearing, I mean, you hear a lot about Yelich and Bell Bellinger and all these MVP. I mean, how are we not hearing more about Eduardo yes. Escobar? I mean, come on. Yeah, man. I'm sorry, but I know he doesn't have 40, but he's got, like you said, 100 stakes and 30 homers in 20, 2010. And I mean, I mean, come on. Like, like we got to. That's pretty good in a tough league. Yeah, what's crazy is you start diving into the statistics of this Diamondbacks offense. Seven out of their eight regulars have over an 800 OPS. <laughs> Think about that. Yeah. Like 800 OPS, when I first learned about OPS, was from David Forrest back in the Moneyball days. Right. When I'm with Oakland, and it's obviously the simple formula of on base percentage plus slugging. And one of the things that David Forrest said, he's like, look, man. Try to keep it around that 800 number, and that's basically just about an all-star caliber level. Peralta walks, and with more on the John Gray injury, let's check in with Alexa Dat. Hi, Alexa. Hi, Rich. Yeah, talking about John Gray, obviously devastation for this team one day after the loss of Kyle Freely and the fact that he is out for the season with that foot fracture. He told me he felt pain that wasn't going away. It was dull at first, but it felt similar to what happened in 2017 when he also fractured his foot. He had some imaging done and they found a crack. He said he's about 80 percent leaning towards surgery. So the doctor's rehab estimation is about three months, which wouldn't affect his offseason workout. So he felt good about that. That was, of course, if he didn't have any setbacks. But he was on track for one of the best years of his career with 25 starts, 11 and 8 with a 3.84 ERA. Bud Black said he improved on his fastball command and game awareness. Obviously, a huge blow to a team with several injuries. Uh, you're right, especially with the Freeland injury last night. Here's Jake Lamb. He has had to fight through injuries. Certainly, last year with a shoulder injury, and this year a quad strain had him on the shelf for almost the first four months of the season. And Melville misses up and counts one ball and one strike. Yeah, this kid from University of Washington, of course, we back the pack here at YouTube, but he was on his way to stardom. And unfortunately, he's dealt with a number of injuries over the past couple of years that have somewhat derailed that, but still incredible talent. Of course, he was the, the starter for a while at, at third base with Escobar here. Escobar. Getting some of those and Lamb getting a start at first base. Escobar a two out double, a walk to David Peralta. And Tim Melville in his first start in the big leagues in two years. And pitch number 20 coming here in the first. Good that's, breaking ball. Dude, that's Good nasty, man. Ball. This guy's got better stuff than I thought he had. Late. I, I think Bud Black undersold him a little bit. Yeah, late. late. 
Late little breaking ball right there. It stays in the zone for a real long time. You see the eyes get big, and it's the late fallout of that break. That's the breaking ball you want to throw. That's the breaking ball you can actually tell him is coming, and he's probably going to get the same result. 2-2. Two -two. Pulled foul. That Shot. was a really good shot, by the way. All of right. Seeing the ball in the zone yeah. and then have it cut under his bat. Here's John Gray, that last start, and he was really, really good. But that foot, and it wasn't that it happened right away, Alexa talking about it, but Black telling us that it was something they truly tried to nurse through over the last three starts or so. Yeah, he's having a terrific year, too. John Gray, I mean, he had a 136 OP, or excuse me, I think it was ERA plus, right? So when you take into account the ballpark factors, then that means 36% above league average. So it's tricky with the Rockies pitchers to try to analyze them, especially as you're preparing to do a game, because you can't just look at the standard numbers, obviously, right. because they're going to be inflated. 2-2 two -two is outside, and they count full now at 3-2. and two. Melville took his hat off there a couple pitches ago, and it almost looked like he was looking at something on the underneath the bill of his cap, whether it's a scouting report or a simple reminder. It's probably the scouting report now. They all have the quarterback little stickers you put on there, and you got to look at all the. I, I, I didn't have any of that. I had to guess half the time. I didn't really throw the ball where I wanted to anyway, but I, you know, it didn't really help me. But runners on the move, the 3 2 pitch, right field, deep, corner, Blackman in the corner is there. Yeah. Sold the sizzle the on that one. Chuck nasty man. <laughs> that beard's nasty too. Yeah, selling the sizzle on YouTube right there. He jumped right in on that. I don't know if he had to, but it was worth it. He went a long ways <laughs> to get it. And for Tim Melville, much needed. High fives all around. Yeah, I thought he had a chance of sneaking it for that foul pole, but. Charlie staying with it the whole time and closing this thing off. That's a heck of a play. Super clap right there. Super clap. I'm going to buy you a beer. I'll do whatever I got to do after the game for that one. I'll take it. <laughs> MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Here in Arizona, AC blowing, which is a good deal. 114 they expected to get to. In Phoenix, the Diamondbacks trying to sweep the Rockies. These two National League West rivals. Our upcoming schedule and the rest of the year, every game has got postseason implications. Braves at Rockies. Remember, that's that one game series, a makeup series. We've got it for you on YouTube. Mets and Nationals, great matchup there. We'll see the Rays a couple times. And at the Dodgers, certainly on September 17th, important. Cardinals back here in the desert to finish off our YouTube schedule. Rich Waltz along with Jeremy Affelt, Eric Burns, Alexa Dat, and the Colorado Rockies with Nolan Arenado getting the day off, still put two up in the first inning. And a great play by Blackman to keep it at 2 0 Colorado. Did Arenado know that we would be playing on YouTube today? No. If he, if he knew that, he would have. Yeah. Well, look, if anybody deserves a, a day off, it's Nolan Arenado. He's. Uh, He's done it all for this team, both with the glove and the bat. Didn't and really want a day off in Arizona, though. I mean, take it like somewhere else. But you want—I mean, this is a hitter's. I mean, you want to hit here, right? Like, Absolutely, Jeremy. I mean. <laughs> all right, here's Garrett Hampson with Jonathan Daza and Dom Nunez. Six, seven, eight in the Rockies' order, and a fastball from Leak is a strike. Hampson a. Another one of the young players. The Rockies, too, are trying to infuse their young talent in, mix them in with the veterans. And Hampson, a 24 year old out of Reno. Yes, sir. And another uh, a long line of short stops, dirt bags, Long Beach State products. Sure. Uh, terrific numbers in the minors. Wasn't in the minors very long, trying to bunt and fouls it back. He has blinding speed, gentlemen. 84% stolen base oh. success rate in the minor leagues. And Bernsey, uh, you're familiar with this guy. Yeah, he's a little stud. I spent some time with him in spring training, and he actually played baseball for John Savage's brother in Reno at mm -hmm. Reno High School. 
and which they have just a terrific program. Obviously, you mentioned Long Beach State, the Dirtbag. Unbelievable numbers in the minor leagues. And if you look at his strike to walkout ratio there, it was terrific. Now, the reason why I feel like he hasn't had that success in the big leagues is you look at the strike to walkout numbers right now, not so good. I think it's one of those things that you get to the big leagues, all of a sudden you start facing some of these big time guys. You start expanding your zone a little bit. Obviously, a lot more pressure on you, but I like this kid from Reno. Swing and a miss. And he strikes out. And Mike Lee, who doesn't strike out a lot, gets his first punch out of the day. And that brings up Jonathan Daza. You know, one of the things, there's a look at the breaking ball from Leak. Changes arm slots. That's one thing that people don't know a lot about Leak is he'll start with a curveball high and he'll come down and drop that thing low on you too. He is changing arm slot and he does change the way hitters see his pitches and when you're throwing 88 you have to do something special so mixing and matching all the time is important is he morphing into Bronson Arroyo a yeah, little bit I would and he learned a lot Look, he played with him in Cincinnati and so they, he was the young guy when Bronson was the old guy and he started doing a lot of those things when when he was over there he needs a, a little more of a toe point yeah, a little, with yeah the, the delivery. stiff leg that's playable and Jake Lamb is there and Leak has two outs. Look, Mike Leak this year has had some rough games and he's had some brilliant games. And all you have to do is go back to two starts in a row when he was a Mariner. He faced the Angels in Anaheim and he lasted just two thirds of an inning. I believe it was the shortest start of his career. Gave up eight hits and seven runs. His next start, he had a no hitter into the ninth yep. and ended up with a one hit shutout and struck out six. So. Yeah I played with him a little bit I'm telling you he, he he can let stuff go and and he knows what his strengths are and what his weaknesses are and he just keeps going out he knows it's a long season but like again if you see who he came up with Bronson Royal, that Bronson was the same way he could go one and two thirds and give it up too, and then the next start out he'll go nine and by you know? and by coming up you mean in the big leagues because this guy yes. didn't spend a day in the minor leagues no. before he was a big leaguer he did get down there the next year I believe in a couple of rehab that crazy it is crazy he went from Arizona State where he was a first round pick played in the fall league and then opened the next year in the Reds rotation 2010 yes no. not throwing a hundred not throwing a hundred with a plus plus breaking ball Just no a guy that knows how to pitch and move the ball around the strike zone that's impressive yeah I faced him in spring training that year and the one thing that resonated with me is that this kid can pitch and he wasn't 100 but he was 94 95 at the time that yeah, is right. smoked to right field it hops off the wall and Don Nunez 24 year old catcher who was going to go to Eric Burns alma mater but uh, signs it's a six round pick he was a UCLA commit Nunez out of the Sacramento area has himself a two out double and Leak likes to hit too so I'm I, I, the guy's got some homer ability the guy can guy, guy guy's probably pretty happy he's back in the National League but can this guy hit Do we know <laughs> well Tim Melville's had two major league at bats 0 for 2. <laughs> Look at this. But if you're going to face somebody as a pitcher, this is the guy you want to face, the right? Guy. The guy that's is throwing guy. 80, 89, maybe topping out at 90. I get it, but I'm not sure if Melville's had an at bat. Oh, no, he has. Three for 21. In the minors. Oh, in the minors. Oh, okay. Good enough. Does it look like he's swinging a 30 inch bat? Yeah. <laughs> I would be. Look at that thing. <laughs> Looks like he's got a toothpick in his hand. Dude, I think that's a one handed bat. <laughs> the practice bat, the one you swing in BP to work on keeping that front side in. Yeah. <laughs> Nunez at second. Don't sell those bats short, though. I, I, I had Beltron. Beltron was I was hitting in St. Louis one time and I was trying to hit homers and I couldn't. And Beltron jumped in the cage with that one handed bat. He said, I'm going to show you something. He's one handing homers out of St. Louis with the little tiny bat, and I'm giving it all my everything I got. I can't get it out of the, I can't get to the warning track. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. Did you say one handing homers? Yeah, Beltron was taken from the left side, and he was using that small bat, and he was just 
he was hitting ball and they were going out. I mean, it, it literally demoralized me for the start almost. How about this guy right here? He's just recently playing for the Long Island Ducks. Yeah, in the big leagues. You never know. He was Stay healthy. He had a uh, he made two starts there. I think he gave up one run and two starts. And the Rockies liked what they saw, signed him. He's had a solid year in Albuquerque. Look, in the Coast League, if you're a starting pitcher and you've made the number of starts that he's made this year, 17 starts, and your ERA is around five. It's good. I mean, he's pitching in Albuquerque. There's some great hitters' environments in the Coast League. Reno, where the Diamondbacks AAA affiliate is, Las Vegas. I'll be in Reno tomorrow night. I know you will. Well, look at that. A one hopper, but that's Ahmed, where ground balls. Go to die and he fires it over to first in time. The double by Nunez. He's left. And we head to the bottom of the second here. With the Rockies on top of the Diamondbacks by a score of two to nothing. For in-depth perspectives on the game, don't forget to check out YouTube Live's game commentary featuring Major League Baseball, the Rockies, Diamondbacks, and a select group of YouTube creators. And they'll add to your thoughts during the telecast with a unique viewing experience. You can view the live game commentary on your mobile phone, computer, and also in the living room of your smart TV. And we'll be keeping an eye on the discussion throughout the broadcast. Is it Gonzo in the uh, chat room, I believe, for the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks? Yeah, Gonzo is in the chat room. I, I saw him earlier. He said he was going to be up in the booth. He wasn't sure if it was going to be our booth. Now the Diamondbacks uh, in their discussion room, comment just flew out of there. Nice catch by Blackman. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap. So. Diamondback fans appreciate the, the skill and the work of Charlie Blackman. Now, another cool part about uh, the game of the week here on Just YouTube is out over here. we get a chance to visit with some of the greats of the game. And joining us now is Adam Jones. Hi, buddies. Hi, guy. How are you doing? Good, good, good. So she's, she's on a point right now. There you go. She's just wearing me out. I like it. How's your first year in the desert gone? Uh, it's, it's been, to be here with the team, it's been amazing, honestly. Um, I mean, I came out here, I lived out here from 04 through 09 when I got drafted by the Mariners. Um, but I haven't been out here in, in uh, you know, hotter than all hell <laughs> summer. So uh, it's, been, it's been good. My family loves it. My mom's been here for 15 years, so it's kind of like a re revampness of coming back here. And uh, she's very happy. She shows up at the games randomly. And uh, yeah, it's, it's close to be home, obviously from San Diego. So I think all is good. Adam, this is Jeremy Affel here, man. Up, uh, good to see you. You too. It's awesome. So this is the first time in the National League. Yeah. Give I'm, me a, I'm an American League player. <laughs> I need that. I need that DH. When they say they off, yeah. just double switches. <laughs> eh, it's a little different. <laughs> that was going to be the question, man. It's just an interesting deal where you where you where you're not. Uh, you're, you don't really get a day off in the National League that you no. think you do, but it's always wear cleats and make sure your bat's close by. For sure. Once that fifth inning starts, you understand, you know, you got to see how the game's going, see how the pitcher's pitching. But once that fifth inning starts, you got to get that body loose. Obviously, I try to start the third, cause so, so <laughs> this park has got to get a little loose early. But um, it, it's a different game. But I think what it's done to me this year, it's actually it's humbled me way more and it's challenged me to continue to stay ready. I think when I, where I was at, I was just got complacent a little bit in, in certain parts of the game. You know how we do, yeah. especially if we, you know, long tenured guys. So uh, I just think this year has just really humbled me and really just uh, made me appreciate this game even more and push me to uh, you know, be a better teammate, be a better player, be better everything in between these lines. So I, it, I'm really humbled by this uh, 2019 campaign and we're fighting for something important. So it's it's amazing to to be able to, to be one of the leaders of these guys. Adam, you talked about fighting for something important. I mean, here you guys are within striking distance of that second wild card spot. What's the mentality when you kind of get an organization that, well, you guys dealt Grinky, but you got some nice product in return. At the same time, you guys are in the clubhouse going, hey, man, we're within reach of this thing. 100 percent. I mean, obviously, losing Grinky, I mean, he's borderline, he's borderline. He is a Hall of Famer once he's all said and done. He waits his five years. Um, but. The, the trade it was a great trade. I mean, we got back a lot of really, really good players, and I think what they're obviously what they're doing. You know, they, I, when I first signed here, they were just kept talking about rebuild and stuff like that. And obviously, a veteran player like myself, there ain't no damn rebuilding me. So <laughs> <laughs> um, you just you just let the guys know they're looking. You got, we all got talent. Somebody dropped that. Somebody get a sign. But uh, we got tremendous talent. It was a tremendous trade. I think Hayes did a good good job of getting really good prospects. Obviously, getting uh, Rojas right here who just popped up. 
uh, in that trade. I think he's a terrific talent. You got uh, Beer, great last name, by the way. You got some <laughs> pitching prospects. I mean, then you got, uh, then we made a trade for, we traded a shortstop, Jazz, for uh, Zach through the other night. So, not Greeky. So, you know, it, it was a good trade. And I think we just let these guys know look at We know we're young, especially the pitching staff. But hey, the veterans, we got you. Just go out there, compete, grind it out, and good things shall happen. Adam Jones is our guest. Nick Ahmed is in the box. Now, uh, I'm sure you've played with some terrific infielders in your day. Yeah. What has a, a five months of the season been like playing behind this guy who defensively is the best shortstop right now in the National League, everybody feels? Right. Oh, he's JJ Harder than me. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, just smooth, simple, iron Mike. Those are right over the top, not the dropping down underneath. Stuff like that. He's 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 JJ Hardy, um, a little bit bigger than JJ. You know, he's Nick is six three, six four. Um, they got him up there, six two, one ninety five. Yeah, win. They need to change these things in those uh, brochures. <laughs> but uh, it's like they got Melville at six four, two twenty five. I'm six three, two thirty. If uh, I weigh five pounds heavy more than him. <laughs> Something's going on with them scales, boys. <laughs> Ahmed swings and misses. Ahmed, a huge jump off offensively this year. He's really worked on his swing. One thing I've, I'm always interested in with, with players like you who've, who've had such a great career and, and still have a, more in the tank, so many players have changed their swings. Yeah. Ahmed has adjusted his swing, and we hear about launch angle in the last two, three years. Guys have sure. transformed their careers. Justin Turner is one of those guys. Sure. As Bullet. Ahmed shoots that in a right Sit. field, Blackman is there. Man. What about Man. you as a, as a veteran hitter over the last few years? Have you tooled with the new age swing at all? Well, I, of course. Yeah, obviously, you know, when I came in the game, um, you know, fourth and fifth starters were 88, 92. Now everybody's 92, 97. Um, so, you know, obviously I can't have the same leg kick I had when I was you know, 28, 29. I can't have, I'm not as explosive as I was. So certain things you just have to understand that you have to do is just, you know, maybe start a little bit earlier, uh, shorten the leg kick. Um, just, just small things. It's a game of adjustments. And the people who don't make the adjustments, they aren't here long. And, uh, you know, I've just been you know, trying to be a creature of habit and see that, hey, the velocity is up. Um, so let's just get that foot down a little bit earlier. Like my boy Don Trill always said, get that bunion down and you know, try, <laughs> try and see the ball as long as you can because the velocity is here and it's not going anywhere. Hey, what about the overall state of the game, Adam? I mean, you've been around for a decade now yeah. and you've seen it obviously change a lot, mm -hmm. you know, I'd say probably within the past five years. Yeah, sure. Where, 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 where are you with uh, with how the game is played today as opposed to where it was when you first came into the league? Oh, you can't take out anybody. And yeah, I know players like myself, uh, you, Bernsey. We, we like messing up that double play. We liked adding that fourth out to our team. Um, can't take out guys at home plate. Obviously, you can do it within, within a good reason. Um, it's just certain things you can do. Obviously, they, they keep talking about this robotic umpire. Um, my biggest thing that uh, I don't like, or that, might, that I'm sure they're going to do is this, is uh, the pitch, you know, getting into the batter's box. It's like you have to get into the batter's box at a certain time. It's like forcing you to get in the batter's box. And then sometimes you're slower, the umpire and the player starts to argue, and then that's a little more time. And then just a bunch of, then you got an argument for no reason just because some clock is up there saying get in the batter's box because we all want to keep the game under three hours. Yeah. You want to keep the game under three hours? Tell the pitchers to throw strikes, pound the zone. <laughs> That's how you keep the game under three hours. Well, pound truth. the zone. Truth, uh, true. Okay, let, so let whatever good. result happen, it's, happen. Wade Miley, <laughs> one of my favorite pitchers to play behind. All right. Hey, because it's, our, it's our policy whenever we see sunflower seeds that, that we have to wrap it up. So all right, I heard that. Tell Peralta to have a good game. All right, but said, Peralta, I hope he trip again like he did last night. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, thank you for the visit. Anytime. Thanks, uh, Adam. Hey, he man. is one of the great guys in the game for awesome. sure, and that's Adam Jones. All right, headlines around the league. Nothing to uh, – I see what you did there. Boy, the Marlins have, uh, have hit Acuna a few times. Kluber shut down for two weeks. Kershaw passes Koufax on the wins list. And good news for Chris Sale, he avoids – Tommy John surgery, although he's likely done for the season. Those are your headlines around the league. Now, one thing I want to talk about is this ballpark, because if you haven't been to a game here lately, this ballpark has changed. What you see on the field is not grass. That's field turf, yep. and that's done a couple of things to this park. Number one, it's made the infield and the outfield slower. 
So it's a little better for pitchers. Balls in the gaps don't shoot to the wall as, as, as much as they can. The other thing it's done, it's allowed them to shut the roof and keep it shut, which means the, the ballpark itself stays cool. When it was grass, you'd have to open the roof to let the sun hit the grass, and they'd close it, but the place would still be baking at 7 o'clock at game time in the afternoon. So the ball's not flying as well there because of that factor and the other factor. This is year two of the humidor, Eric Burns. Mm -hmm. They use the humidor here? Yes, second year. And that's that's, awesome. that's kind of slowed the onslaught down a little bit in this ballpark. Well, I think there's a good chance you're going to see the humidor used across all of Major League Baseball with the way the balls have been flying. Um, it's been a huge topic of conversation. Guys now obviously throwing harder than ever, and guys are hitting the ball just about as far as ever as well. So it would be interesting to see what Major League Baseball does going forward uh, with what many people would consider an issue with the baseball as far as I am concerned dude I want homers I want action right we root for the analysis all right let's revisit this here's Tapia you guys were talking shift against him and I think it's significant that leak instead of hanging out on the outside part just busted him in it's not as severe a shift as it was when he knifed one through that left side but it's hand in hand you can shift but if your pitcher doesn't hit the spots and again that's in on the inner half that's the second part of the shift that oftentimes people leave out you can shift but you've got to pitch to the shift to make it work that's right and you're basically telling a lot of pitchers be robotic I'm a human being I can't exactly hit the spot all the time and the shifts are built on you exactly throwing to the exact spot this isn't Nintendo where you can go up up left left A B A B and then all of a sudden you're perfect every time you throw you can't do that. But up, up, left, whatever left, the code, a, the cheat code, a, the cheat code you used to put in there, man. You're all over it. <laughs> Here's a two-two. <laughs> See, that's why you keep it in. If you keep it in, he'll hit into the shift. And the data shows. Look, they wouldn't shift if the data didn't show that if you pitch him in the right spot or he hits it where he usually hits it, you're going to get more outs than you're going to give up hits through the shift. I know it's hard. I mean, look. I, I talked to Joe Madden a couple years ago about it because Madden, of course, was maybe the the godfather of the shifts toting that computer around when he was on uh, Mike Sosha's staff with the Angels and Bud Black and he was the first to really start the shift but he even said you know if I there are some pitchers that if you shift for those pitchers they're not going to be happy so then you have to decide would you rather have the shift than an unhappy pitcher or a happy pitcher and just play it straight up and some of the times you play it straight up that's a nice play there. Lamb to the rail and he picks it and there's two outs. I definitely would want if I understood the game I want my pitcher to be completely comfortable out there knowing what I'm pitching to and if he doesn't like the shift or he's not ready you know, I don't mind shading shifting I never feel comfortable so I'm throwing a sinker and I'm just throwing it up over the plate but there are some guys that you know what that can actually spot it pretty good Maddox shifted his own guys because he knew where he was going to throw the ball like there are some guys you can do it with. But I think bullpen guys in general if they were that good at throwing strikes where they wanted to they wouldn't be in the bullpen they'd be mm -hmm. starting pitching. So when you shift for bullpen guys that can be a disservice to them. Here's Blackman now. And he takes outside and now you had wondered why they weren't shifted to the right side against Blackman in his first at bat and guess what that's where they are now. Of course Blackman had a couple runners on at that time so there was you, you were in a more traditional alignment so you could get a double play. Blackman an RBI single in the first Rockies got both their runs three hits right out of the box against Mike Leak and a good jam shot there and a running catch at third by Escobar and Mike Leak has settled down into this ball game. Rockies on top by a score of two to nothing. Now the Diamondbacks had a great draft in 2019. And this exclusive video gives you a never before seen look at what goes on behind the scenes of a draft. Here's Arizona Diamondbacks. They have seven picks tonight for the first 34, 45 total picks in this draft. Almost overwhelming when you start thinking about the number of picks that you have in day one. The Arizona Diamondbacks have the next selection. It's a team effort, and it starts with Mike Hazen and Amiel and Jerry Porter. And all of the cross checkers and all the area scouts and all of the people that are that are looking at the numbers and going, 
this is what we anticipate this player being from an analytical perspective. This is what we think we expect this player to be from a physical perspective, just a pure scouting. And I think the organization has done a tremendous job over a very short period of time of being able to mesh those two together to where at the end of the day, the process is really good. With the 16th selection of the 2019 MLB Draft, the Arizona Diamondbacks select Corbin Carroll, an outfielder from Lakeside High School in Seattle, Washington. Hey Corbin, Derek here. Hey man, congratulations. Proud to have you part of this organization. You know, all the time we spent with you and your family, you know, it made a big difference. And, and obviously your ability and character were the things that we targeted and uh, couldn't be more proud, I can assure you that. Yes, sir, thank you very much. I, uh, I can't wait to get started. Uh, everything that our scouts, who spent a lot of time with you, I know Dan, um, most notably, yes, Everything he said about you is everything that we want to represent as the Arizona Diamondbacks and players, and our players. And you know, you do that. And that was a big part of why we took you where we did. Um, and we now we want to go win a World Series with you. Yes, sir. I can't. I can't wait. I'm. I'm super excited to be a Diamondback. To see more exclusive behind-the-scenes videos from the Diamondbacks, subscribe to their YouTube channel at YouTube.com/slash Dbacks in the desert. Two nothing. Rockies on top. Mike Leak leads it off 9-1-2 for the Diamondbacks. Gerard Dyson and Cattell Marte to follow. If you're just joining us, probably the biggest headline out of this game is that John Gray, who was supposed to start for the Colorado Rockies, was put on the 60-day injured list with a foot injury that he'd been nursing his last three starts. In an emergency, the call went out to the minor leagues Tim Melville is making his first start in the big leagues since exactly two years ago and so far so good. Yeah he doesn't look like he's uh, trying to feel for himself out there he's a bullet McMahon and leak is out number one. Good angle on his fastball. He's top to bottom. He's pretty good. You know, that's kind of a, a situation you don't always see a lot of pitchers throwing from now is that whole they've got all these different cutters and, and different things. But this guy seems to me like he gets on top of the baseball good and he shoves it. It has a good angle so that you continue to see the top of the baseball. And what you're seeing right now from these hitters, and, and Burns he was explaining to me a little bit earlier, where these guys' hands are cocked to try to get that that launch angle, a guy that can throw top to bottom with his fastball. They only see the top of the ball so it's really hard to lift a ball that you're only seeing the top of which is going to probably create a lot more ground ball action and it makes that breaking ball so much better when you're throwing it at a hitter they swing so much because now they're finally seeing the bottom of the bottom of the of the of the, uh, of, the, of, the of the ball allowing them to swing right at the top of it but you're getting a lot of weak fly balls and, and everything because of that top to bottom story runs that pop up down could tell Marte coming up with two outs here in the bottom of the third. Well for the Colorado Rockies they had an awful July. If you want to go back to June 21st you could do that as well. Look at that 17 and 35. Only the Tigers have been worse in Major League Baseball. There's your July and the team ERA that's look that's probably the biggest reason why. The injuries they've had both in their rotation and in their bullpen. And uh, I mean, look, Bud Black is as good as any as a pitching coach or a manager at working with pitchers, but even he hasn't been able to magically revive this group with all the the guys they've lost. Tyler Anderson's been out all year. They just lost Gray. Freeland had had a nightmare of a year. Looked good last night before the the groin injury has knocked him out. Scott Oberg's out with a blood clot. Ottavino's now a Yankee. Here's the 0-1. And to have your worst month in your franchise, <clears throat> if you want to be in the playoff hunt, it can't be July. It can't. You, you, you slide too much there. Your dog days of August are still coming, and you got September where everybody's kind of in the hunt. Now, so. re remember, though, the Rockies went to the last two postseasons, and that's the first time in their history they've ever had back-to-back postseasons. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not like Bud Black's not getting the job done. No, wow, look at this. Great manager. Guys love playing for him. I'm digging me some Melville right now. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking Bud Black likes this guy. One, I know. He just met him this morning. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. 
And he strikes out one of the better hitters in the National League, Cattell Marte, with a nasty breaking ball. He has retired seven straight. Tim Melville's back in the big leagues. And right now he's beating the Snakes on our MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. 2 nothing. Rockies on top. Now over to the Diamondbacks. And Tori Lavello, of course, manager of the year in that 2017 season. That 17 season, they won the wild card. They beat Colorado in a wild wild card game, if you will, 11 to 8. And that's the only postseason for the Snakes in the last eight seasons. And he, we were unable to acquire the theme song, the fight song for UCLA for Eric Burns and Tori Lavello, but he joins us now. Skip, how are you? I'm doing good. I appreciate the time there for UCLA. All right. So yeah. answer this. We've been discussing it for the last couple of innings. Subtract Goldschmidt, Pollock, Grinky, Corbin. How have you stayed in this race with with all the new faces and, and, and without the guys that you'd, you'd leaned on the last few years? Uh, yeah, a belief, a belief that we have enough here every single day. Uh, to keep pushing and, and doing the best we possibly can for the best possible outcome day by day. And we don't look beyond today. Uh, we fight together. We we celebrate together. We we grow together. And uh, this is a special group. It's always been a family around here. Family first. And that shows up in the most crucial moments. And uh, when you're in the grind that we're in, these guys fight together and believe, and that's pretty special. So you're seeing uh, Melville here for the first time. What do you, what do you got from your side? Yeah, I mean, he's spinning it and uh, yeah, changing it up a little bit. Uh, and I think he's just effective with his fastball. It's not it's not overpowering. I think he spotted up enough and we're just having trouble finding the mark right now. Um, and I think our guys are starting to you know, get a better feel for how he's going to work us. But you got to give him credit what uh, he's into his third inning of work. and He's given up only one hit, so he's doing a lot right. We got to make an adjustment. Hey, Tori, uh, we saw the shift hurt you guys in the early going yeah. now overall you guys have had a ton of success with the shift does uh, does it kind of when you look at a situation like that I mean when is it and how is it that you decide to move your guys well you know we do a lot of time pregame and pre series uh, we have a lot of scouts uh, that, that are watching the teams in advance so we compare a lot of notes and make the best decisions possible moving forward and you're right in that first inning we had uh, several ground balls that found the right spot so we made a tiny adjustment um, and um, and uh, we decided that we were going to maybe undo a little bit of the shift. I don't like to chase. I think once we make the decision, we can't keep chasing it back and forth. That's when you start to run into problems. But when uh, the pitcher sits down and, and he, he thinks through with a clear head, gives us some good input about what he's seeing down that gun line, uh, we'll make some adjustments around him and what he's believing in. So we did that for Mike, and hopefully it's going to yield good results the rest of the way. Hey, Tori, thanks for sticking with us through the inning. But we always guarantee managers stick around. We get a couple quick outs. So two <laughs> quick outs, and there you go. I'll take that every time. Thanks, right, guys. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Tori. We were just talking about that, yep. right? So you have a veteran guy like Mike Leake out on the mound, and he sees three ground balls. He's like, I'm out here. I'm doing my job. I need some help here. Yeah. And then Tori even admitted, and this is what makes him a great manager. He's like, hey, you know what? It's Alonzo. Where's one in the ribs? Yikes. But all of a sudden, you know, he's like, I don't want that. I want it back. And Tori Lavella says, OK, we'll make a couple minor adjustments back to where you were. But I think the key here is, look, you, you crank he's a Hall of Famer. Um, in the in the trade deadline Zach Gallen is a uh, really nice addition they were high on Jazz Chisholm the guy they sent to the Marlins uh, but they've restocked their farm system they've had a huge jump I mean the Diamondbacks have had the biggest postseason or the post trade deadline rise in the prospect rankings they got four in that Houston trade Gallen came over from Miami you saw the draft that they had with all the, the first round picks. So they're essentially rebooting or rebuilding or refurbishing, however you want to say it, without blowing the whole thing up. Yeah, that's the trick nowadays with with a lot of these teams because you don't have now you don't have the waiver wire, right? You can, I mean, you, you don't have or the uh, you don't have the post what are the play or the post trade deadline type trades, you know, where you get, you can put guys on on waivers and try to steal them off that kind of stuff and make trades. Now it's you have to make a trade and make your team set basically by July 31st. So you got to get some big names in 
make some positive trades, get some good good guys back in these big names that can help you because you don't have more opportunities really down the line. And I think that that's such a big deal. And you're seeing a lot of these GMs having to work a little bit harder, be a little bit more, uh, I, I'd say, strategic on who they trade and who they get back to try to build up teams without blowing up a whole team if you're wanting to still compete. Garrett Hampson at the plate. Alonzo hit by a pitch. He's at first. Infields looking for two. Hampson's got good speed. And he shoots that one through the right side. Dyson quick to the gap to cut it off. And Garrett Hampson has a single. That's the first hit against Leak since that second inning. And here comes Jonathan Daza. Real nice job staying inside the baseball, shoot it back up the middle. This is what we all sort of expected from Gary Hampson coming into this season. Terrific minor league numbers. Guy that's known to use a whole field very well. But if Leak can keep it to singles, he's never out of the inning with double play scenarios. And he'll get a lot of ground balls for you. He knows how to add and subtract, and singles are not going to kill him. And he's kept him in the ball game with just a bunch of singles pretty much being thrown out there. Bit him, bit him a little bit in the first inning. He got snake bit a little bit, I'd say, in the first inning. But for the most part, he, he's probably out there right now knowing he's not, he's got a good, he's one pitch away. He's got great opportunities here uh, with the defense he has in that infield to turn double play ball. So you're not going to see a lot of panic from a guy like Leak. Started his career, as we've talked about, with the Reds six years there. A giant, a cardinal, a mariner, and now a diamondback. And a chase there by Jonathan Daza, the 25 year old Venezuelan. I think he's 31 now. Doesn't walk a lot of people. This is start number 26. And he's walked just 22. Keeping the ball in the ballpark has been tough for him, though. There's the roller, and it Jeez. sneaks through to left field. Peralta up with it. Holding third is Alonzo, and there's yet another ground ball that sneaks through the infield. I mean, I'm thinking that's a double play the whole way right here but again it's ground balls leak is still one pitch away and he needs to he's going to keep his head on his shoulders but I, I mean I mean I'd like to see the replay on that again here we are right here's the replay it's not a bad pitch it's a two hopper and it just looks I don't know if the if if they had a late break on that ball or not but it didn't look like that that wasn't I mean Eric I don't know what you're thinking but that doesn't look like it's not fieldable right there right? Must have jumped on him, huh? Top spin, maybe it sped up on him. On Escobar, the third baseman? Yeah, it must because it looked like he had a beat on it, and then all of a sudden, I wonder if it hit with top spin and it just sped up on him right there because that looked like that ball was going to get snagged. Here's Nunez now, bags loaded, one out. Yeah, I got to believe it's got been a bit of an adjustment for all these guys playing off of this new turf. I mean, look at this right here. It, yeah, it sped up on him. It, it must have just jumped on him because. Looks a little like that scene in Major League. <laughs> Dorn? <laughs> Dorn! <laughs> what happened there in the ninth? <laughs> Ball of the strike. I got, you I got the tips. I got the reference. In fact, that was uh, <laughs> most of those scenes from from that movie were filmed down the road in Tucson at High Corbett. Yes, they were. I was so fired up to go in and play that used, high Corbett for the first time. That used to be one of the great minor league stops. No longer used. I think I believe the University of Arizona plays their home games. Yeah, they've done a good job in that ballpark now. Count two and one for Dom Nunez. Bags full of Rockies. Alonzo was hit with one out. And then Hampson and Daza they have sneaked ground balls into the outfield. 14 balls in play, 10 of them on the ground against Leak. And his infield right now is shifted and Nunez knocks that one to center field Dyson has it everyone tags only one trying to advance and that was close at second the run scores but Hampson almost got caught off you know sort of a, a courtesy decoy I'm going to trot to third and a smart throw by Dyson back to the bag at second. Yeah, and believe it or not, it's a smart play by Hampson not tagging up there in that situation just because 
if he were to get thrown out at third base, it would have happened before Alonzo would run across and score at home. Now, that was a little too close for my liking, but as you can see, Alonzo is not the most fleet of foot. No, and if he's tagged on that throw, Alonzo is still a ways away from home. Plate. Yeah, he's not going to score. Innings. He's going to get tagged out before Alonzo would have scored if he were to get tagged out of third base. The now, inning would have been over, and Melville fouls that pitch back to the screen. All that said, I still think he would have made it to third base. It's just one of those situations where you're not going to risk it. And you're a rookie. And yeah. so you, you really don't want to risk yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, have you seen Fernando Tatis Jr. play? Well, that's true. <laughs> you got to risk it for the biscuit. Melville in the center field. His first big league hit. And here comes Hampson. And he scores. Woo! Look at Hampson. Look and at Melville. Look at them <laughs> both. Celebration. I mean, right now I'm thinking Bud Black is pretty excited about this kid. Putting RBIs up, throwing up zeros. That was a breaking ball. He stayed with it on the plate. I mean, look. I mean, hey, that bat is the perfect size for him. Yeah, that little one-handed bat worked out great. <laughs> meanwhile, crazy. I can, meanwhile, I can tell you, Leak, right now, Leak is up there like, what is going on here? I'm just giving up nothing but singles. I'm getting nothing but grounders. I, I can't get a double play to save my life. And these guys are just slapping the ball, and they haven't even hit the warning track yet. I mean, it's just. A frustrating situation, I would think, for Leak right now. Doesn't Melville look like just everybody's neighbor next door? <laughs> yeah. Buddy, buddy no, he used to play no with. No shirt on underneath the jersey. Well, look, you you got to know that there are a lot of pitchers, either in the minor leagues or in the independent leagues, who will take note of this start because Melville, it's parts of 11 season of the minors, didn't go to camp with the Rockies, was with the Long Island Ducks to start things, and then ended up in Albuquerque. And now in an emergency gets a late night call. Here he is. He's got a four nothing lead and an RBI hit. Yeah and let's not undersell him man. I mean this dude's throwing 92. He's cutting the ball in on the lefties. He's got a big hammer to go with it. He's got this change up this fading down and away. He's pitching. Kind of like you said Jeremy you take this ball here and just like I got nothing to lose Tapia into left field that's a hit Peralta up with it runner coming home and Daza will score I'm telling you you, you shift on that kid it, it is not going to go well for you the, the, he has great back control man he he's showing that he it isn't even worth shifting on because you're, you're trying to take away a single on a shift right you're not taking away anything but a single and if he hits through the shift, he's going to hit a single. So you might as well just play him up straight up and let him and, and let him hit where it's at. I mean, you got too many guys playing all over the place, and he's going to when he's when he's hitting, and he's the kind of guy that I think would take advantage of the shift every time. He had a cup of coffee in the last couple seasons. This really his first full season. He's 25 out of the Dominican Republic, and. As Bud Black told us, the bat to ball skills really play here in the big leagues. And an exciting young player. I'm out Tapia. He's made some catches recently, too, that have been fantastic. Balling out in all directions. And that's, look, if you're a Rocky fan, I know it's been a disappointing year. But the, some of the things you have to take from this season that this is one of the guys that you have to look at and say I like him in Coors Field. That's a place where he can really make an impact. Absolutely. A lot of ground to cover. Here's Trevor Story. All right you wanted to see the, uh, the catch. Or at least one of the catches. We'll get there. This is from the past weekend. Trevor's story here. Was singled and popped out. Four hits in the inning, all singles. And that pitch is in. All right, Bernsey, you asked for it. Here you go. Saturday. And yeah, watch this. Mm. Boom. 
And then the treads is floating everywhere. Looking like Bob Marley out there with some ups. I don't think he made a friend. No. Story hits a fly ball to right field. Rojas is in and makes the catch. The Colorado Rockies and their emergency starter, Tim Melville, are on top of the Diamondbacks, headed to the bottom of the fourth in the desert. Colorado five, Arizona nothing. Well, if you're the Rockies, you're trying to recover from that July. And in the last month and a half, do some damage, knock some people out of the postseason race. With all the injuries, we talked about John Gray's injury on the injured list today with the foot injury, Kyle Freeland with the groin injury last night. So for Bud Black in an emergency, Tim Melville called up, and boy, is he having a day. And of course, as we pointed out, for the first time in franchise history, the Rockies went to back to back postseasons in 17, their first winning season since 2010. That was Bud Black's first year in Colorado. And then last year, beat the Cubs in the wild card, and then swept by the, that very good Brewers team in the division series. And he joins us now, the skipper of the Rockies. Bud, thanks for the visit. How are you? Hi right, guys. Uh, All right, doing doing great. Let's start with your starting pitcher, Tim Melville. When we talked to you, you didn't know a whole lot about him. Apparently, he can pitch and he can hit. Well, you know, he's uh, so far he's doing a great job, right? He's uh, mixing pitches. Uh, the off-speed stuff uh, looks good. It has the Diamondbacks a little bit off balance. He's mixed in a few fastballs, but it's the fastball slider, slow curve change mix that. You know, so far is getting it done. And hey, how about that line drive? That was a nice swing. It was, but I, I'm, I'm more curious about this breaking ball because he's he's throwing a really good break, almost to where you can tell the hitter what's coming because that breaking ball is like we didn't think he had that curve. I mean, that's a that that's a game stopper. Yeah, right I, mean, there. I mean, so far so good for sure. He's getting it underneath the lefties. Uh, they're out front of it. You know, he's a big guy that you know I think has a little bit of deception in there somehow. So uh, you know, let's let's keep this going. Yeah, I would I would expect you'd want that to keep going. Yeah. Hey, but how about for you guys overall? Uh, Rich Benson, you guys went to the postseason the past two seasons, first time in franchise history. Uh, we're in the mix for a lot of this season, and then since have fallen off. Obviously, dealt with a ton of injuries. Uh, what's your approach here going forward? Well, you're right. I think the expectation level was high coming up the last couple of years. Uh, you know, the, you know, right after, right before the All-Star break and after the break, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't hit, we didn't pitch. Uh, you know, it was, it was rough. And now here we are, uh, you know, looking at September and where we are right now. You know, we're going to finish as strong as we can. We're going to try to win as many games as we can. And also with that, uh, you know, have a look at some of the young guys who are up from AAA, Hampson and Daza. Uh, there's some young relievers in the bullpen that. You know, you might see today if the if the game continues like it does, and, uh, and these guys have big arms. So, you know, it's a combination of uh, you know playing with respecting the game and the integrity of the game, trying to trying to play every game hard, and we, we're going to play against some good teams who are fighting as well. But uh, you know, we have some things to find out also. But thank you for the visit. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. All right, Bud Black in his third year, terrific manager, terrific guy, and. No big league manager should have to endure the amount of injuries he's had in his rotation. Two of them in the last 24 hours. John Gray, a foot injury, 60 day injured list. Kyle Freeland, who finally started to look like last year, last night, out with a groin injury. That one is into the seats. Eduardo Escobar, the hitter, with David Peralta and Jake Lamb do up against Tim Melville. Jeremy. What do the numbers tell you? Numbers tell 31 strikes out of 44 pitches. He is coming after these guys. He's not trying to pitch around anybody. He's not trying to nitpick the strike zone. He's pounding the strike zone. His first pitch strikes nine, nine first pitch strikes at 11 hitters. I mean, he is not allowing the hitters to get any gain on him. He's basically putting them behind the eight ball right out the gate to where they have to be defensive and not offensive. And that's allowing his breaking ball to be swung at more often because they have to because they're always 0 1. And he's doing stuff like that. He's not afraid to move guys back off the plate to own that outside corner, especially a guy like this that's hitting the way he's hitting. You got to protect that outside corner, and that's the only way to do it. 
Escobar doubled in the first. Pulls that one foul. Some of the things that he has faced in triple A I think help him out here. Number one the environment. This is a I know it's it's not as great a hitters park as it used to be but uh, this is Arizona um, in the Coast League you pitch in some really extreme hitters environments and he's using the same baseball. Remember the, the ball that's used in the major leagues this year is also used in triple A. So when he's been pitching in the Coast League there really isn't a change in the ball now we can have another discussion about the ball that's a whole different story but at least he doesn't have to fiddle around it's a ball that he's been used to throwing all season long and he was 10 and 5 his ERA just over 5 but you said but over 5 I mean when you're playing in places like Fresno and you're playing in places like Salt Lake and Reno and, and Las Vegas all these, these are these, these are band boxes man the ball flies so the ERA is nothing to me what what what, what it is for me is to is to be able to use the same baseball I have an idea of what my breaking ball will look like once I get to the big leagues and it might even be a little bit better once I get out of those high level or those you know those basically high elevation type stadiums. so I he, he's he's definitely not showing that he's really been he's not in shell shock he's not intimidated by these stadiums he's not intimidated by the hitters he's not intimidated by a pretty good offensive team and he's shown some pretty good maturity. David Peralta with a count 0 and 2. And he's got the humidor here. This is year two for the humidor. Of course, the Rockies were the very first to have it a long time ago. Eric, are you in favor of installing one of those in every major league park? I think what Tori Lavella said was good. I think you want to keep it consistent across baseball. So if you're going to have it here, why would you not have it everywhere else? And, you know, with all the balls flying out of the ballpark the way they are, I don't think it's a terrible idea. I mentioned earlier, though. Look, I, home runs aren't the problem, dude. I like homers. It's the strikeouts and it's the walks. We want the ball in play. We want action. Yeah. So whatever we can do as a sport to promote action, I'm all in for. It. But for all the people that are complaining about the homers, dude, give me more. And the strike zone to me, I, I, and I'm going to be a pitcher talking here. I, I, I don't. They need to start. There's got to be a consistently on the strike zone. Belt to knees, the outside inside, but we're not get they're not getting the kind of some of these high fastballs aren't getting called. I mean, you used to see back on some of these old clips where, I mean, you saw Yogi Bear is like standing up, they're throwing and he's catching. I mean, he, it, 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 the name of the game was throw the ball over the white part of the plate. You swing at the ball, and we'll see what happens. But now there's a lot of these guys that are like taking these close pitches and they're like spitting on pitches, and it's you can say throw more strikes, or you could say, hey man, how about we expand the strike zone up and down and get guys to swing the bat a little bit more too. Let's check in with Alexa Dat, and she's got more. And we were talking about uh, Rymel Tapia, Alexa. Yeah, Rich, reviewing that catch from Saturday by Rymel Tapia in center field. He was talking to me about how when he got back into the clubhouse, the guys were saying that that was the best catch of the season so far. And Tapia said that not only was he excited about it, but he was able to keep a stern face after the catch once he saw Lewis Brinson's reaction, because that's really what did it for him. He said, that was awesome. That's what I wanted to see. His disappointment, which was uh, what led me to be able to be so calm, cool, and collected by it. You guys also mentioned he's from the DR. So I wanted to review his player's weekend nickname, which is L50. He listens to a lot of 50 cents. So his friends back home call him L50. He said he's also a future and Lil Wayne fan, but uh, that's his favorite rapper. So that's what's going on on the back of his jersey. Nice. Good stuff. 50 cents going on the back of his jersey. Is that what we is that right? L50. Oh, L50. I was going to say 50 cent. Hopefully he doesn't throw like 50 cent. Remember that first pitch throw, first pitch he threw out in New York. I think he hit the camera guy. Must have, him? must have slipped. <laughs> Jake Lamb is 0 for 1. Diamondbacks have just one hit. And that was the Escobar double back in the first nine straight retired by Tim Melville and he snaps off another good breaking ball. That's the one Jeremy that's when you're talking about that yep. you can almost tell a hitter it's coming and he's not going to hit it. Now he started it over that one was the inner third of the plate and broke off the plate. But, but you, you could can see really the eyes. Oh yeah. I mean his eye, the eye they want it because he's throwing it for a strike early. 
and he did it and now all of a sudden he can throw that one right there and it, it just barrels into their back foot and it's too hard to hit. And then he throws a pitch at the same speed that's breaking the other way. That's what makes him so difficult. And yeah. I mean, on top of that, you're looking at a dude that's profusely sweating with no undershirt. <laughs> yeah. That's intimidating out there, Rich. Look out. <laughs> Here's Melville. And he again. strikes out Lamb. How about this? Ten straight retired by emergency starter Tim Melville, who's knocked in a run with his first major league hit. What a day it has been for him already. Four innings in as the Rockies lead the Diamondbacks by a score of five nothing. Eight hits with the five runs for the Rockies who have dropped the first two of this three game set. And the Diamondbacks with just the one hit. Now we we're talking about the live game commentary and we have confirmed it is Gonzo one of my favorite people in the game uh, features Major League Baseball Rockies Diamondback and a select group of YouTube creators in the commentary. You can see additional in-depth thoughts providing viewers a unique experience. You can view it on your mobile device computer or smart TV. And on our MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube look at the schedule here. Braves and Rockies on a Monday Mets and Nationals early September. And the next night, Blue Jays at Rays. Important game for the Indians on September 10th. Rays and Dodgers is a fun one on September 17th. Cardinals and Diamondbacks on Wednesday will finish out our schedule. And you would expect that'll be a hugely important game for the Cardinals. And the Diamondbacks are hopeful that that is an important game as well. Rockies catcher getting the day off except for visiting with us is Tony Walters. Hey guys. Hi, How's Tony. it going? How are you? Good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. This has been fun. I mean have you met Tim Melville before he walked in the clubhouse <laughs> today. Um, no I haven't. I met him today. Awesome dude from Virginia. He's doing a great job right now for the rock show. Um, just to give you guys a warning I get distracted so and I'm going to have seeds probably thrown at me and everything but um, I appreciate you guys having that's, me on. That's very comforting <laughs> for your pitchers to know you get distracted easily. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm focused back there. Oh, okay. All right. So what do you got? So Melville, what do you got on his breaking oh, ball right now? Because this breaking ball was not something I was expecting. Yeah, his curveball looks great. His slider looks great. His changeup, I'm surprised about his changeup throwing a decent amount and mixing the balls. And uh, they're doing a great job of Chuck. Blackman. Nice swing, nice Chuck. Caught there. Good swing. So as a catcher right now and you're starting to see your starters go down and you're knowing that you're going to have probably a lot of emergency starters coming up your preparation has to change right because now you're having to learn guys now that you have not caught all year in some of them I mean, you haven't in Melville's case you haven't even caught in spring training. What is it that goes into you preparing for these games knowing that these this rotation is about to change. I think it's more focusing on their strengths um, you know not distracting yourself with the scouting reports of the other hitters you always have to. Man, left field. Oh, good swing. Mac can swing it. Nice swing, Mac. Um, but it's more towards just going towards their strengths, you know, knowing what they can and cannot do, and um, keeping it simple. You know, you can throw down away, up and in, spin, fade, but just keeping it more simple and um, going to their strengths. How has your game, calling a game at least, changed with? The new way hitters are approaching uh, hitting at the plate and with the evolution of launch angle and obviously a lot more homers we've seen a lot more strikeouts and a lot more walks. How has that affected you in the way you've called the game Tony. Um, you know you can't just stay in one spot. Um, you got to pitch down you got to pitch up. Um, you got to show them some kind of off speed. Um, hitters are good. They're they're really good and they can adjust on the fly and uh, but you really have to change eye levels use separation in there get guys on the front front legs um, but it's all about just moving the ball around and keeping keeping it out of the middle of the zone. Yonder Alonzo down the line that's foul. It's foul. foul. I've been asked uh, by our crack staff to to find out how the the wager is going with your dad and the mustache. <laughs> so my uh, my father in law my dad. Both brother-in-laws. I have some friends. I have mustaches. 
there's probably 15 mustaches that I'm related to that are uh, they're uh, they're holding strong. And uh, I kind of I kind of grew this chin piece a little bit just to even it out. My wife my wife asked me if I can just even it out a little bit. She thought uh, I was looking a little uh, weird with just a mustache. So, but um, I'm probably gonna shave this in a little bit. I'm probably I'll be in the doghouse for a few days with her. But any grooming uh, tips from Blackman <laughs> from Chuck? Yeah, Chuck gives me a bunch of uh, tips with uh, different kind of brushes, different oils, and yeah, we uh, brushes. All, yeah. When's the last time he's brushed that thing? He br hey, he Chuck. <laughs> after the showers, he goes in the bathroom, spends about 10 minutes grooming that beard, making it looking perfect. He like does this motion with his beard. <laughs> so, Tony, you yeah. got you got you got to get rid of that chin strap, man, and just let the dirt swirl. You eat. think? You think? Just shave this guy right here, bro. That upper lip lettuce at your sport right now is fantastic, my man. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate uh, yeah, it. Thank you so good. much. <laughs> that is great. I appreciate it. Thank I you. I don't know, man. His wife tells him to trim it up. My wife told me to shave my beard. It came off. Oh, you I know. Gotta... Hey, happy wife, happy life, yeah. right? <laughs> well, that's it. You know what? Well done. Nice interview. Thank you. Enjoy your day off. I yeah. suspect you'll be pinch hitting in the eighth inning. So. Yeah, hopefully. I yeah. want to get a hit. There you go. <laughs> We'll hey, thanks you. for having me on. Thanks, I really Tony. appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, hey, Tony, good luck to you and the Furry Murray, my man. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. See you guys. Furry. Tony Walters. <laughs> furry Murray. Rockies catcher. All right, Charlie Blackman joined the Cespedes family barbecue boys, Jake Mintz and Jordan Schusterman, and to grade the beard and maybe take that beard and Photoshop it onto some of his teammates. Here's a look. And a listen. Jordan Schusterman, Jake Mintz, Cespedes Family Barbecue here at Coors Field with Rockies outfielder Charlie Blackman. Now, Charlie, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, Charlie, we're going to play a little game with you today. Uh, you are known very much for your beard. We decided to put your beard on other people uh, with the help of Photoshop. We wanted to give you the opportunity to grade your beard on other people. All right? Okay. We're going to start with one of your closest teammates, Nolan Arenado. <laughs> Nolan Arenado, what do we think? Uh... You know, it doesn't look terrible. It doesn't look terrible. It, he looks like uh, the most interesting man in the world right now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give him a B plus. Now, be careful with this one because it's your manager, Buddy Black, here. Uh, I think he actually looks pretty decent, but how about you? What do you think? Uh, I, I like it on Buddy. Um, you can definitely tell that he's just fermented a little bit. Like, it's right. darker than the rest of his, uh, right. his look. Uh, and that's going to hold him down a little bit. Okay. So I think he, he gets a B minus. Gets a B minus. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is a uh, young Charlie Blackman <laughs> without yeah. a beard. How about that? With the beard. Or we can go Ooh. with this. So what would you grade this one here? Uh, that, that's pro There's your F. Okay. And what's this? Oh, that, he looks like a good player now. He looks like a good player yeah, now? A plus. It's crazy how the beard a makes plus. the power come. That's right. It's amazing. Awesome, Charlie. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for grading your beer on other people. Jordan Schuster from Jake Mintz. Charlie Black. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Thank you. MLB's Cut 4 team has launched its own YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to Cut 4's channel. Get fun, fresh, hilarious baseball content. Follow the link in the YouTube description for this game to see more of their videos. The Tim Melville show continues. Melville working on Josh Rojas with Nick Ahmed, Alex Avila for the Diamondbacks. And a 5-0 Rocky lead. Melville, an emergency starter, up from AAA. Had not pitched in the big league since late 2017. And his last start in the big leagues was in Chicago against the White Sox. On the 21st of August 2017. In the air. That would be Trevor Story, and that would be out number one. And that is 11 straight retired now by Melville. He needs to have that, he needs to save that ball, Bernsey. That out right there was a big out. Did you know that, Rich? You know that was a big out for him? Now it's his career high. Career About. high pitch right now. Really? Yep, four and a third. Four innings was his career. He tied it. Last. It's big out, man. I'm asking for that ball. Well, he got his first major league hit earlier. Yeah, man, he's gonna, he needs all kinds of baseballs. He's going to have the bat. Way. He's going to have the ball of his hit. He, if he wins this ball game, I'm sure that he'll get that baseball right. as well. And a beer shower and all I'll, kinds of other stuff going I'll bet on. The lineup card from Bud Black. 
I miss the beer shower. <laughs> <laughs> Just a great thing in baseball. Oh, that's that so good. Really, I don't think people outside of it understand. How cold is the beer shower? That's, <laughs> man, it is cold. Yeah, but it tastes good. <laughs> Ahmed lined out in the second. And there's that good snap on the breaking pitch for a strike. It's one ball and one strike. Ahmed homered in this series. His only hit, but his last 17 games, look at that. Seven homers, 17 games. His OPS at 1 2 2. Bernsey, what did you reference with David Force, your, your old guy in Oakland, now the general manager in Oakland, saying uh, they were looking for someone right around 800? As far as OPS, yeah. Yep. I mean, on, that, that, on, was, that was a time when people weren't discussing OPS. On base plus slugging. Now, the average OPS in baseball right now is 761. Mm -hmm. As David told me back in the day, you get to 800 and above, we're talking about an elite player. So you have a really good hitter right here who, who, who is, who's made some strides. We talked about a little bit earlier. He's coming back. And this Melville guy has got these guys so messed up. He just threw that slider that didn't even start as a strike. Ended up in the left-handed batter's box and he swung and missed it. it is, so Bud it had alluded to the fact there is some deception from this from this kid that these guys are not able to pick him up. A lot of these swings now, Jeremy, you know this. They've been created to hit velocity. Yeah, he's and below bat speed a little bit. 100%. And he continues to spin, spin, and spin. And spin up, spin down, spin way down. He's changing eye levels with his breaking ball. He's staying on both sides of the plate with his breaking ball. I'd be curious to see how many pounds he loses <laughs> in this game. That's a serious sweat rate. Now, we were talking about his uh, experience on the mound and at the plate. You're the Diamondbacks with Ahmed right now. These are potential free agents in 2020. Robbie Ray, David Peralta. Nick Ahmed, Jake Lamb. So part of the exit of, say, a, a Grinky, Goldschmidt, AJ Pollock, is you know that, especially with guys like Ahmed, you'd like to keep him in a Diamondback uniform for some time. Dude, because, that. quite honestly, he has improved incrementally every year. And Tori Lavella told us that this year the jump offensively has been dramatic. Yeah, it'd be nice. And I'm sure Nick Ahmed would love to stay here. But when you become a free agent and they don't take the risk on you early, you have a chance to go see what 29 other teams want to do with you, too. And there's playoff potentials. There's, you know, it, it, it is a dangerous thing. But they cleared money, right? When they got rid of Grinky, they cleared, what, $60 million or whatever it was? And, and, and so they have had, they've cleared money for a reason. But they're going to have to sign some of these guys and bring back some of their power. There's the jump. Look at the OPS on the bottom, 100 points there. Mm -hmm. Average is up. He's already cleared the home run total from last year. Of course, he won a gold glove. Probably should have won a few of those before last year. He's always been an elite defender. It was a pretty good college team at UConn, right? George Springer was on that team. Yeah. And you're looking at he, he's he's looking at I, I mean he's going to look at guys he's going to look at guys right now like a Crawford and, and and compare himself to to a Crawford and, and statistically and want his contract I mean there's a lot of things that these that the GM has to start thinking about right now with these guys that are starting to accelerate in their career coming up on free agency years three two is out so that's a good take that's a good at bad one of the things that Tori Lavella was saying before the game with Nick Ahmed this year he said in previous years. He would have at least two or three different swings. And he said from day one of spring training, he's had the exact same setup, stance, and swing. So tells me he's a guy that's starting to believe in himself, know who he is, know what he's all about, rather than trying to find himself all year long. Because it's hard enough to hit or even play at the major league level, let alone change your delivery or batting stance all the time. That's Darnell Coles, the hitting coach. For the Diamondbacks, the chase rate, that's one of the things that Tori Lovello talked about in referencing Ahmed better this year. This guy, Alex Avila, has always been a terrific on base guy. He swings and misses. He had some good years in Detroit, didn't he? Yes, he did. He was an all star, won a silver slugger. 
I had a pretty epic collision with this dude in Seattle when he was with the Tigers. Any of your collisions, the way you ran around the bases, were going to be pretty epic. How'd that, <laughs> how'd so. that, how'd that turn out? Here's the old one. <laughs> Made for a great photo, Rich. <laughs> Oh, man. Who got the worst of it? Uh, uh, the moment of silence is uh, telling me who got the worst <laughs> of it right here. <laughs> well, you can ask, ask Alex, but uh, I was out. You see Christian Walker on that's, deck. That's, that's the only thing that mattered. <laughs> yeah. And Avila takes a strike, and it's one and two. He took it like a champ. Diamondbacks bullpen is up. There's one out. It's five nothing Rockies. Avila's in the eighth spot. Christian Walker looms on deck. That's another way the game has changed for me. In the fifth inning, you're down five nothing, and you got double barreled down there in the bullpen. It used to be like if you're down five nothing by the fifth, and you're going to go to a there is a long guy that I'm going to. I'm going to this guy right here. Dude, Ooh. that's unhittable. That yeah. pitch is unhittable, He's Jeremy. He's telling them what they know it's coming. You can see it. They're almost loaded for it, and they just swing right over the. It, it, it has nothing to do with them not thinking it's coming. It has everything to do with the fact of how late it breaks, and that ball stays in the zone so long, and there it disappears. Right when he's already committed to the swing, the ball changes. One, it changes depth. It changes left and right by about six inches and and you have to be out in front of it to hit a breaking ball you have to be six six inches in front of the plate as it is so it's definitely a, a pitch where it, he's going to make a name for himself at that pitch if he can keep throwing it like that Christian Walker now pinch hitting three for seven with a couple of home runs as a pinch hitter and a breakout year for him those are good pinch hitting numbers yeah it's not easy no, and he didn't pinch hit all that much because he's usually in the lineup. The star at South Carolina, part of two national championship teams. Blackman under it makes the catch. The Tim Melville story just gets better and better. Longest start of a small major league career, his first major league start in two years. And he's helped with the bat as well. And the Rockies lead it. After five, by a score of five to nothing. Ever wonder what professional baseball players eat in order to maintain their physique throughout the entire season? Well, here's a look. I'm a big time snacker. I bring down like a backpack with me, just full of snacks protein bars, trail mix, raisins, chips. I like to pitch hungry to win, but not hungry to eat. I'm a big sushi guy. I started with your regular California roll, and now I'm just like, sashimi is the best. So that's the perfect pregame meal for me. Some players are health freaks. I take two bars down there with me, and I have a little protein drink that I drink throughout the entire game. And some guys are eating Snickers and drinking Mountain Dew before the game. My go-to snacks for game day would consist of coffee, chocolate. There's the chocolate sauce. And ideally some pizza. My snack when I was playing was m and Snickers, but these guys are uh, eating a lot more healthy. I don't know if I can play in this era right now. Salad's great. I mean, I, I mix in as many greens as I can. Granola bars, bananas, fruit. Now that nutrition's become this huge industry, and it's definitely becoming a lot more advanced than just like a burger and wings or something before the game. We do have a nutritionist cook up food for us, and every day is something different. Yesterday we had a Venezuelan truck food here serving out arepas of Venezuelan Wayland foods. Dominican rice is by far the best rice I've ever had in my life. I like the diversity of the food that we have. And during games, sunflower seeds is always my go-to. Sunflower seeds are always big. That's going to be around forever. That and bubble gum. I have a mouthful of bubble gum constantly. Sugar-free. Shout out my dentist, Dr. Della Bella would appreciate that. Well, that was the dietary portion of our telecast. Now we shift clumsily to the legal portion. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the office of the commissioner of baseball may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent. Is that uh, latch? Might be. I think it is. I wonder what his nutritional thing is when he watches games. Renee Latchman? Yeah. I'm not sure. Looked like it was chilly. It looked pretty good. <laughs> Bernsey, what'd you have, man? What'd you do? Did you have a whole uh, 
were you as healthy as you are now, like health nut wise, when you played? No. Yeah, I wasn't either. I actually think I got healthier in my eating habits after I was done playing, and I probably should have done it while I was playing. Joel Pyamps is out of the bullpen for Arizona. Garrett Hampson is the hitter for the Rockies. And so Mike Leak's day is over after five innings, and he was singled to death. Eight hits for the Rockies, five runs, seven of the hit singles, and most of those are ground balls that found a hole. Hampson had a base hit in the fourth and has struck out. Jonathan Daza, Dom Nunez will follow. Piamps misses. He was called up from Triple A Reno for his first uh, major league stint. And this is his major league debut. So it's a big moment for him. Pretty good numbers between Double A Jackson and Reno, an ERA of three and a half. Jeremy, did you ever mow any of Harvey's chili pregame uh, San Francisco? No. The reason I didn't is the whole golf ball thing really messed I was with just, me. I was <laughs> just about to say uh, that. The golf ball thing messed with me. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Legendary golf ball chili in uh, San Francisco. You're going to have to explain that because. Yeah, so when I was, when, before I was with the Giants, obviously came in as a visitor. And I couldn't figure out, I, I started asking when I first came in, I was like, why is there a golf ball on top of the chili pot? Like, why is it a handle? And they said, well, that's the golf ball someone found. So the guy swore that he did not change out the chili the entire time in a series. So he kept denying it. And Harvey was the, you know, the clubhouse guy. Great guy, by the way. Awesome guy. Harvey is the best. And he, so one of the guys dropped a golf ball in the chili game one. Game three, they dug out the golf <laughs> ball out of the chili, and he got busted. And it was, uh, I just, I could not do it after that, even though he claimed, I know, I, I knew it was a joke, or, yeah, I, I swear, I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. End of the bat, Daza is going to dump this one into center field. And Jonathan Daza has his second hit. That's, look, that's not just with you. That's been legendary throughout the National League. <laughs> Everyone knows when you walked into that visiting clubhouse in San Francisco and saw the chili pot. The, the joke was always, what do you think, Titleist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but you would probably, if you're going to eat it, you're going to eat it on, on the first day in. But I, I just couldn't, I could never <laughs> do it. I could, I could never do it. And here is Nunez. Tell you what, the approach for the Rockies today is not power. It's a lot of singles. Nunez doubled in the second. Sacrifice fly in the fourth. Bud Black's ball club. Lost two starting pitchers in the last 24 hours. That went a foul tip. And if you're just joining us, the news of the day that to start with, John Gray, who was supposed to start this game, that foot injury he'd been nursing through his last three starts. The Rockies are going to shut him down. He's on the 60 day injured list. And then Kyle Freeland, who looked great throwing last night, injured his groin. They're still evaluating, but uh, Bud Black said he's probably headed towards the IL. And you have to think about that with both these pitchers. And, and obviously, when we were talking to Bud, he didn't really know for sure yet what had happened to Gray or how long he was going to be out. But you have to shut both guys down in those situations because whether it be the foot or the groin or a hamstring or whatever, anything in the lower extremity, it messes with arm slot and it messes with shoulder. You can have shoulder injury, you can have elbow injury, all because your plant is just different. And when you're messing with guys arm slot or you're messing with guys trying to pitch around a certain injury it'll take its toll on the arm and that's where you see a lot of blowouts happen and it's not worth it. If, if these guys are in first place by six games maybe we try to figure out how we can get this done the best way possible but right now it's not something you want to take a risk on. Hi Empson is major league debut a breaking ball that's down low. The third base umpire Dan Bellino said no swing Chris Siegel's behind home plate calling balls and strikes. He's had a good day. Mark Carlson's at first. Trip Gibson's at second. And Dan Bellino is out at third. You know, 
I've been wanting to ask you this, Eric Burns, and it's not necessarily about the the automatic strike zone, the robot strike zone, and all of that. But you did have that game where you were behind home plate and used that system. I'm more interested in how did it look from behind the plate if you had to call those balls and strikes? Difficult. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you were behind the plate with the system. When was this? Oh that, yeah, it was last year. That was a that was a, maybe the a few years ago. The trial balloon of the the system, and Bernsey was behind the plate, and he was like the administrator with that system. But it all it dawned on me watching that. Number one, it was fascinating to see how it would work with an umpire behind the plate. But number two, I wish more players would would do that, hop behind the plate, and try to call balls and strikes. Just to show how difficult it is. Well, it's incredibly difficult. And that's why for years I've wanted the automated strike zone. Right. And it's just it's so hard to be consistent. It's so hard to get it right. And we're always going to need a home plate umpire back there. Let's just give him the assistance that we get to see from 3,000 miles away. And why, why should you and I have this information of whether or not it's a ball or strike here in Arizona, right? And then... The game's going on in New York City. Yeah. Some, so there's, a, there's something seriously wrong with that. And I'm almost, but, but do you think possibly if they ran that automatic strike zone with the earbud or what they ever have the minor league umpires and they ran it all the way up, by the time he had enough games under his belt, couldn't that actually com almost mold that guy into really understanding the strike zone because of what he sees and he wouldn't need it as much at this level? Or do you think they need to bring it up here as well? That one is smoked into right field, and that's a hit. Rojas over to get it. That's going to chase Daza to third. And the Rockies have runners at the corners. And guess who's in the spotlight again? We'll get back to the strike zone discussion. Yeah, our dude. Our, our, Tim Melville, who. Oh, another RBI potential. Got his first major league hit with an RBI hit. This is that swing from the young catcher Nunez. Yeah, first of all, let's give Nunez some love. He's been swinging it today. I like everything I've seen from the kid from Elk Grove. Manager's dream when you got to sit your main catcher and your backup has a good game. All right, Catching so. Catching and pitting. What, what are you doing here? Are you thinking bunt to stay out of the double play? Because the infield up the middle is looking for two. That first and third bunt play is always a, no. a creative way. Let's just let him swing it. There's the bunt, first base side, and it's gorgeous. Unbelievable. And it works. This kid can do everything right. Everything. What wow. a day. What a day. Oh, I like the bunt as long as we're not just sacrificing. Oh, yeah. That was a right? That's perfect a street bunt. If you have a chance to get him in from third base, I'm all in. Yeah, so there's a big difference right there, right, Rich? Well, if it's first and third. This is a... A play that's I mean, used. Joe Madden loves this play. Other managers like it. If you re if you can read it at third base, it all has everything to do with the guy on third base. Yes. I mean, this guy's like I'm a big fan of Top Gun. Iceman right there, man. Does everything right. I mean, perfect bunt. Perfect. Put yourself in a position to bunt. Drops the knee. What else can he do? I mean, here's a guy that started in independent ball this year. In his 11th year in the minors, then went to Albuquerque, is only here because of the injury to Gray, and he's having the game of his life. He started in a league that is using the automated strike zone. He started in a league where you can legally steal first base. <laughs> Tapia to right, <laughs> and Rojas. You know, that put a really nice bow on our conversation, getting back to that, come to think of it. But the Rockies. And Tim Melville are having quite a day here in the desert. Melville is throwing a shutout. His first game in the big leagues in two years. He has his first major league hit and has chased home another run with a squeeze bunt. Okay. Your favorite MLB teams and players and their favorite swag. You can catch all 30 teams sporting nicknames and specially designed jerseys, rocking custom gear during Players Weekend from August 23rd to 25th. Follow MLB on social media for all the Players Weekend coverage. Great place here in Arizona and on a, on a day where it's 114 degrees outside. No uh, coincidence Alexa Dat has found the pool in right field. Alexa. 
Yeah, Rich, I mean, what do you do when we're absolutely breaking records outside? Yesterday, the record was 112. Uh, originally, it came 113 degrees, and then today the record was 110, and it's now, again, 113 degrees outside. You hang out by the pool. Come on, this is amazing out here in center field. One of the most unique aspects of Chase Field, any ballpark for that matter, so it's pretty cool that they were able to do this. Uh, this was one of the times where this ballpark was able to keep the roof open for the longest amount into the summer into June 25th which was a rarity for this team. Another thing that they did this year which they had synthetic grass out on the field. And I want to read you a couple of things about this grass as we show it to you because it's actually pretty cool. So the infield is as close to natural soil as they could possibly get it. It's comprised of 90 percent coconut and 10 percent cork. It retains the moisture and helps maintain lower field temperatures. It's all 100% natural and non-toxic. I feel like I'm reading an ad for, for something that you, that's edible that you can eat, but it's really cool that this is their playing surface. Uh, it's called Geofill, so something that they've been using here for this season, and the players say it really helps them when they are on the fields, keep the temperatures lower, keep them cooler, and helping them perform their best. Guys. All right, Alexa, thank you. And it, uh, I think the pitchers like it because it – it is slower for the ground balls and in the gaps in the outfield as well. This is the true test now for uh, Tim Melville, right? This is the third time through for this Arizona lineup. There's some good hitters in this lineup. Melville has given up just the one hit. Oh, the EFIS. And Gerard Dyson what? running up to bunt takes ball one. Dyson, Cattell Marte, Eduardo Escobar. I mean, he just pulled out a 69 mile hour breaking ball. Little flare in the left. Tapia is there. And he makes the catch. Tim Melville's day, well, it was unexpected that he would start, but since walking into this place, he's been brilliant. That's a nasty one right there, Jeremy. That top to bottom starts on the inner third. Yeah, he has different variations of it. You guys can tell sometimes it's got a little bit more of a hump in it, other times not so much, and it acts more as a slider or cutter. I don't even know exactly what you would call it, but let's just slurve. Nasty right now. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. It's gone five and a third. That's a career high. Four strikeouts, two walks. That one is drilled. Right field deep. And gone. And the Diamondbacks are on the board. Number 27 for Cattell Marte. Just like that. He got one of those sliders and got it up. The same pitch we were just talking about. And he buggy whipped it out over the right field fence. Here's the adjustment that needs to be made right now. It, you, you, it's it, it, to me if I'm if I'm pitching, I'm okay with it. They weren't making adjustment to my breaking ball. They decide right there. He's cheating in. I mean, that wasn't a slider, Jeez, but no, I'll tell you right now, that was an. In, but he missed his location, and that's to me one of the few times that I've seen him miss his location tonight. Set up away, glove kick back over the plate. That's what happens. But to me, he's thrown so many strikes. These guys are in swing mode. That's going to happen. You're going to give up a homer every now and then. And, and if I'm him, I'm okay with it. You just want to shut it down as quick as possible. With a six-run lead, absolutely. Yeah, if my first thought was that was a cutter that didn't cut all that much. But no, fastball. Melville off the mound, and he gets a good hitter out in Escobar. Two outs here in the sixth inning. Now, look, in this day and age, the video rooms for major league teams are not just high definition but I mean you can simulate standing in and watching a guy from him facing you the, the catalog just look at behind Bud Black on all the iPads the, the videos are uh, they're right there for you I'm sure there's video of Melville pitching in the Coast League the Triple A games there are plenty of television games there but certainly not as extensive and the prep I would think for the Diamondbacks for this guy was hurried and not as thorough as they'd like. And that added to some of the mystery of what we were going to see. I agree, but even if they had an understanding the way he's throwing that breaking ball and commanding the fastball, 
I, maybe maybe the results might have been a little different, but man, it, it ain't gonna be much different. I mean, it, this is this is a situation now where if he was missing over the plate a lot, I can see that. But I'm tipping my hat. I mean, he, he's making it really hard on these guys. I mean, they're guessing. I mean, that's complete guess by Peralta right there. Even with that, that ball wasn't even close. No, not even close. Because that ball right there, think about it. That's a fastball in that looks like he wants to drill it because that's his spot and it's coming off the plate. He Peralta to left. Tapia is there. And Tim Melville is through six innings. And is beating the Diamondbacks. 6 1. Rockies on top. And man, what a day for this guy. You got to feel good about someone who's paid their dues, hung in there. Gets an opportunity and is certainly taken advantage of. It. All right, Eric Burns and Rocky infielder Garrett Hampson teamed up this spring to educate viewers on the finer points of base running. This should be fun. Greetings. Know the name Garrett Hampson. That a baby Garrett Hampson. Base running. There he goes, and what a jump. Is there a part about it that you think about? You're like, I could work on this, I could get better at this. It's about jumps. Got a really good jump. Getting your reads off pitchers. He's going! You gotta know what he has, knowing his move, his timing. Now what kind of pickoff move does he have? Got it picked off. The new rule changes as far as sliding in to second base, what do they teach you? As a base runner, you have to go straight into the bag. So you can't go right, you can't go left, and you can't slide past the bag. Got it. That's your bag. That's your bag. That's not their bag. And you say, I'm coming in, and I'm not going to go right, and I'm not going to go left, because I'm going to play the game clean. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go right at my bag. Go right at my bag. And I'm going to take it. And I'm going to go into it hard. And I'm going to pop up. And I'm going to pop up. It's still my bag. But the contact actually isn't going to fly me over there. I'll still have to be on top of it. That's how it's done. Gotcha. Well, we're going to go dude. <laughs> oh man, I'm seriously <laughs> mentally exhausted from watching <laughs> that film. To see more exclusive <laughs> behind the scenes videos from the Rockies, subscribe to their YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Rockies. That's your bag. It's your bag. It's your bag. I Don't give it up. I want to talk about the pants at the beginning of the film. Did you know that, that red. you were going to slide when you wore those white pants, the white jeans? Yeah, man. That's sweet. <laughs> 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 the one bucket went 25 feet. Okay, like, <laughs> that's my bag. Uh, well, we man. talked about earlier with Adam Jones, and he was saying how the game's changed, and he was one of the guys that liked to get after the middle infielders a little bit to do everything in his power to break up a double play, and in a lot of senses, they've taken it out of the game, but they've only taken it out of the game by dudes going way to the right or way to the left. You can still go right into that bag and then you have every right to pop up, Jeremy. Yeah, I, 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 you have every right. You're right. You're right. You made that very clear by the buckets flying through the air. Trevor Story at the plate. Charlie Blackman. Ryan I, McMahon. I got a killer slow mo vid of that on my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> my boy Kowalski took it. Oh man. There's Blackman. Now the Rockies have a, a pretty good bench to choose from if they need a, a pinch hitter here. Of course, Nolan Arenado's getting the day off. Daniel Murphy's on that bench. Ian Desmond's on that bench. We've already visited with Tony Walters. He's on that bench. And Story walks. Joel Piamps in relief of Mike Leak. Leak went the first five. Piamps making his major league debut. Gave up a run on two hits in the sixth. And here is Blackman. I played with a guy that had ninjas living in his beard like that. Yeah. Brian Wilson. Yeah. Pretty epic. Epic beard. He made subway commercials out of that deal. He had all kinds of stuff because of the beard. Blackman's had a, a really good series here. Runner goes, pitches out. There we go. That's your bag, Trevor Story. Right on in there. That's his yeah, eight, 18th. Story, that's Story's bag right there. I love this. Mm. 
He didn't 18. really pop up as much as you did, though. Well, you might want to work with these guys a little bit. He's not trying to take them out. <laughs> but you see the pop up, and you can pop up right into them. Now, the thing is, you can't lose contact with a bag. Yeah, right. So the buckets, because they weren't yeah. 200 pounds. Good point. You, would, you flew through I it. I ended up flying through, and that's what a lot of people tried to make that point on social media that it would not be a legal slide because I went past the bag. I would counter that with you put a 200 pound guy right there and I'm not flying past. Him. I think you need to do that, that again with a 150 180 pound punching bag like boxing put that I want to see you pop up into that and say that's my bag. Great call. <laughs> Or we could put Rich Waltz out there. You're about the size of a middle infielder. <laughs> That's right. Long ago in middle infielder. Blackman into left center field. That's a base hit. And that chases home Trevor Story. And Charlie Blackman's got two hits. You know, hitting on the road for Blackman has not been a, a great place this year, but he certainly enjoys hitting here. And, and he had a base hit last night, and he's got two more here. And he really. That's a good piece of hitting the, the location exactly went exactly where the pitcher wanted it and he stayed on it pretty good. I mean he, these guys are really dangerous when they got runners on second base Bernsey. They're dangerous 11 hits 10 singles that one is flipped out of play. So Blackman look and he homered on Monday with a hit last on uh, last night two hits here the home road splits for Blackman right now you see the drop from 2019 that's OPS that's the difference in OPS home and road come on that's that, not good that's not good and that is if the season were to end today that would be the biggest drop in major league history of home road splits and the Diamondbacks going to get a double play there McMahon bouncing lamb and a good clean turn by Nick Ahmed. What do you guys make of that number? I mean, looks, Blackman certainly is a valuable player, and you would expect that he's going to be productive for a few more years at the very least. They hope so. They've, they've got him signed for four more years. What do you make of the home road splits being that dramatic? He's been described to me as a creature of habit. As a matter of fact, I sat down a couple of years ago for an episode of Play Ball with Charlie Blackman, and he described himself as that. So for whatever reason, obviously, of course, Field's a great place to hit. We know that. But you back that up with the fact that you take him out of his routine. When you're at home, it's a lot easier to stick with your routine and your schedule and whatnot. And you put him out on the road. Now, he's way too good of a hitter to have that big of a drop. I think I would expect there to be a difference, Jeremy, but not anything like that. Yeah, it's a big difference. So we got Yonder Alonso last time he tried to bunt. What do you think of that? I got a buddy back home, Mike Bowie, and he is he wants to know why they don't bunt a whole lot more on shifts like that. Why wouldn't he work on bunting a lot more? Wow, because he can hit it over the shift <laughs> into the corner. That was a great timing of a question. Alonzo, the rebound kicks out, and he is out. Rojas got a good kick out of the corner. And Alonzo trying to stretch it to a double and why not with a 7 1 lead and two outs and he is thrown out. I still want to know the answer. I mean I understand he hit that but would you not try belt does it sometimes would you not try and, to in a 7 to 1 game no in right. a one run game a two run game where you need to get on base for your team absolutely. Yeah. I just feel like they should work on it a lot more if they're going to do power shifts like that. Agreed. He also needs to know who he is, and that probably wasn't a good idea. But right. it did kind of kick back perfect for him. I'll give that to him. He kind of had to commit to that. But so. nice play, nice tag. Ahmed finishes. Yeah, how about the hose by Rojas? It's yeah. the guy, one of the guys they got in the Zach Greinke deal. He's a good young player. Oh man, he put up some monster numbers in Triple A. Seventh inning stretch on the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Jeremy Affelt, Derek Burns, Alexa Dan. I'm Rich Waltz here in Arizona. And the Colorado Rockies right now are beating. Well, hold on a second, Rich Waltz. I don't mean to interrupt you, but when you see the number 40 flying around here, let's go ahead and tip our caps and 
take him off for Pat Tillman, who uh, a friend of mine, obviously, longtime Arizona Cardinal, Arizona State Sun Devil, who was killed in Afghanistan. But it's so cool to see he's still here. Without you question. Know, Arizona, That's about 15 years after his death, man. Arizona State, Arizona Cardinal. Yeah, it's, 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 it's awesome. It's one of the things that, if you're an Arizonan, and you don't have to be, right? I mean, this is a name, obviously, nationally and known around the world, but what he meant to this city, uh, it, it's, it's everything. And, you know, what he meant to so many people as, as a friend, as a husband, um, I, just a, a real special dude that, continues, uh, needs to be celebrated continuously. Well said. A reminder, the MLB ballpark app will complete your next visit to your favorite team's park. Buy and manage game tickets, redeem special check-in offers, access exclusive content, and much more. Download the MLB ballpark hey, app hey. today. Hey. Hey. What's up? Bring the heat, kid. All right, who of us uh, in the pool of how long would uh, Tim Melville go today had seventh inning? I definitely did not. I had five at best. Jake Lamb, a high fly ball towards the pool. Dazzles there, and he makes the catch. If you're just happening by this ball game, the Colorado Rockies have just had rotten luck keeping starting pitchers healthy. Last night, Kyle Freeland pulled the groin, probably going to the injured list. John Gray, who pitched well his last time out, was supposed to start today, but the foot injury just became too much to bear, and he's now done for the season. 60 day injured list. So the Rockies called up Tim Melville, who hadn't pitched in the big leagues in two years, hadn't pitched in the big leagues much at all. Three starts, three relief appearances over an 11 year professional career. Started the year with the Long Island Ducks. And all he's done is handcuff the Diamondbacks, limit them to just two hits and a run, pick up his first major league hit, an RBI single, and then drop down a perfect first and third safety squeeze to knock in another Ooh. run. And that's one of the harder hit balls right there. Now, the, the only run is a Cattell Marte home run. Rojas just lined out. But this is a game that Tim Melville has been waiting for his entire career. Well, this is the reason why I love this sport, Jeremy. It's, it's about the stories, That's right. right? It's about stories. the guys. These guys actually are the reason why people want to continue watching baseball at, at, at a certain level, because there's always people around the game that all of a sudden come up and just or a Cinderella story like every year you hear it happening from somebody somewhere some team finds his diamond in the rough and I can't say he's going to be like this every start I don't know if he's going to be like this in any more starts but I can tell you right now this is a pretty awesome opportunity for him and it's probably good for all those guys down there to see and to just be reminded uh, of how special this game is and he's pitching against a good offensive team here's Ahmed who's lined out and walked. Our YouTube postgame show comes up following our broadcast. And if he's available, we'll visit with Tim Melville. Now, he might be as a starting pitcher. He might be icing. He might be getting treatment. But we're hopeful that uh, either he's done with his treatment or hasn't started yet because we'd love to talk to him and find out about the last uh, 24 hours. <laughs> There's something about, like, the way he looks yeah. that makes it even better. Like yeah. this roly-poly dude with the rosy cheeks. Yeah. Just out of nowhere. I don't know if he's even going to ice after this game. Will he even feel anything after this game? I feel like he might not feel anything. Be like, I'm good. <laughs> he might need to IV up, though. He might need to get an IV in here after all the sweat he's got working around. Yeah. What, has he got, you think he's, that's the same jersey? He's got a, that's, that's going to be his second jersey, right? I don't think they'll. They would have two jerseys for him. That's true. Right? That's Bud true. Black said he met him about five minutes yes. before we walked into Bud Black's office this morning. Yeah. Well, We're like, what do you know about Melville? He's like, yeah, nothing. I just met him. You know, Tony Walters had the same thing to say when we interviewed him. He'd never met him because he wasn't in camp with them. He went to, uh, I mean, he was with the Long Island Ducks to start the year, and then he ended up in AAA with the Rockies. Yeah, Melville's lucky he has his name on the back of his jersey. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's some good clubhouse work there to get that thing ready. It's impressive. I mean, Jonathan Gray wasn't a scratch until this morning. Thinking the Diamondbacks would have rather sung Gray right now, I think. They were probably thinking, oh, Gray's out, thank God. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll get this kid. Now they're probably thinking, maybe we should have faced Gray. We, have we actually have a game plan against that guy. Think right. about that, though. We have this guy coming from the Long Island docks. Yeah. Who throws 90 miles per hour with a curveball changeup and a slider. Yeah, like, what's going to scare us? They were salivating. Yeah. And now we just finish seven. Incredible. Seven innings, Tim Melville. Most pitches of his career, by the way. Most pitches of his career, longest outing of his career, and a chance for his first major league win. And a tip of the cap, a wave to the seats. I'm sure there's a family member or two that are here. Oh, he's waving at me, man. I'm the, <laughs> I, I'm the president of the Tim Melville fan club. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's recap it, guys, and, and uh, we'll tag team this. Mike Leak on the mound, and, and you know, Jeremy, you've been talking about the, the approach for Story, Blackman, and all these Rockies. Yeah, they're just single after single. They weren't trying to do too much with him, and they just kept singling him to death. That ball right there probably could have been a double play, got him out of a jam, didn't. But, I mean, then this guy comes in. This was a big play, the Blackman catch early in the game. Yeah, they, it gave him confidence to keep going, gave him confidence that there's a defense behind him that he has not played with before. And he just ran with it, and the Rockies seemed to just continue to chip away. Yeah, look, Mike Leak did not pitch that poorly. He no. just got single to death. Yeah, the onslaught. Now, look, he got his first professional hit this year in the minor leagues. This is his first major league hit, and that's an RBI single. The game was still pretty tight at that point. Tapia has another off-field hit and another RBI. It's 5-0. And back to the mound for Melville. Yacker. He retired 10 in a row at one point. Then he stretched it to 11 with that punch out. He's already got a handshake. Yeah. That's how famous he is. Dom Nunez, young catcher, getting a start here on this day game. And now, first and oh. third bunt situation, no problem. Textbook. No problem. This game's easy. Six nothing at that point. This is the Marte home run. No, nah, Dwyer. I mean, why are we showing this? That's a courtesy homer Look from at him. him. I just can't get enough of this guy. <laughs> oh shucks. <laughs> I'm pitching uh, in the big shucks. leagues. Shucks. Uh, Dominating so a prolific offense that has seven out of their eight regulars with over an 800 OPS, and he just absolutely crushed it. Carves him up with that breaking ball. Hampson takes a breaking ball up from uh, Joel Piamps. Hampson one for three. Jonathan Daza is two for three. He's behind him. Great uh, production from the bottom of the Rockies order, right? Hampson, Daza, Nunez, and Melville. Melville's knocked in two. He's one for two. Nunez is two for two with an RBI and a double. Daza's got two hits, and Hampson is scored a run in single. I mean, you say Melville in the game of baseball. You know what a normal baseball fan thinks? Moby Dick? No, Mike Trout's hometown. Oh, really? He's from Melville? No, he's from Millville. Oh. Right. He's Melville, though, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, but <laughs> he's, he's it says here's Melville. <laughs> Jeez. Here's the one, two. And it's in the air. And out of play. Where's he from? Virginia? He is from, yeah, Alexandria, Virginia. Why wouldn't he be? It's the home of the Freemasons Museum. Seven to one. Rockies up here with 12 hits. The two hits for the Diamondbacks. The Marte Homer, the second hit. And you see Melville's line, seven innings, four strikeouts, two hits, and a run. And that's a swing and a miss. Now, you know there's a lot of rumors between the Freemasons' connection with the Illuminati. Yeah, yeah. I just wonder if Melville has Can you give us some enlightenment on that? Well, look, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going through our MLB network research. Mike McCurry is our critically acclaimed researcher assigned to this game, and I don't see anything about the Illuminati. I've got, <laughs> I've got Marte's war. I've got Escobar's incredible year. I don't have 
No, I don't have Illuminati. I'm actually burning calories watching Burns run in place up here. I mean, I, this is unbelievable. I'm sweating for him right now. This is Daza. He takes a breaking ball for a strike. It's just some footwork. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. I don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean to make you uncomfortable. Hey, you Diamondback <laughs> fans who are watching uh, and follow the minor leagues, Eric Burns is scheduled to make an appearance tomorrow night in Reno. Right? Correct. The Reno Aces. What are you doing there? Well, we have the uh, big event for the Let, Let Them Play Foundation. Oh, yeah. This is nice. us. There he is. This is what we I have am, to deal I with. I am burning the calories right now. There I am looking for <laughs> Illuminati in my research. Couldn't I'm trying not it. to look over at him the whole time. <laughs> Uh, you gotta get those steps in, man. No kidding. I feel like I should bring you water. So what, Just what, stick me in a cage for what, three hours? What are you doing tomorrow night in Reno, which is a great oh, minor league town right now, a great ballpark? Yeah, so long story short, my wife and I uh, started a foundation called Let Them Play, all about kids and youth activity and getting them outside. And our big kickoff event was a triathlon across the country right. that actually uh, I remember that from last year you started. Exactly. Yeah. Seven-mile swim across the San Francisco Bay, 2,400-mile bike to Chicago, 905-mile run from Chicago to New York City. And along the way, we stopped at 13 different ballparks and handed out over $60,000 of grants to youth activity organizations. Awesome, awesome, man. So the Reno Aces, the documentary actually is just came out, um, not publicly. We've done, a, we did a private screening with USA Triathlon in Cleveland. Did one last night with the Challenge Athletes Foundation in awesome. San Diego, and we'll be coming out uh, shortly. It's pretty cool. The guy who did it, Eric Cochran, did an amazing job. But tomorrow night in Reno, we'll be doing. Um, the Aces wanted to get involved, and we're going to be handing out, I believe, two different grants to youth activity organizations. And the bottom line is this: 60% of kids do zero after-school youth activity. Kids are spending seven to nine hours a day on screens. And 97% of physical education has been taken out of public education, everyday physical education. Kids are getting it like one day a week now. And I know, obviously, as you sit here and see me do whatever the heck I'm doing. I'm about ready to start doing sit-ups. Well, here, here, here's something yeah. very serious. Every, when you sit down, every 17 minutes, our brains go to sleep. Whoa. And so when we put Man, our... You better stand up, Rich. You're way, you've been asleep for a long time. When we put our kids into an environment where they can't move, I, we're restricting them, not just physically. And the, the whole concept of this, like, this is no fat shaming, nothing else. I don't care about that. We're restricting them mentally. And so learning this, obviously. I like that. Dealing with severe ADHD when I was a kid. And now going through and, and, and having that physical education, which was my only outlet, it was huge. Well, we look forward to that for you Rocky fans and uh, Diamondback fans that uh, follow the minor leagues. Reno tomorrow night. That's a great sports town. That basketball team has been terrific at the University of Nevada. They should have a good football year. And it's the hometown now of Mike Kruko, the uh, mm -hmm. yep. Yep. future Hall of Fame analyst for the San Francisco Giants. Amazing Here, guy. Seven to one. Rockies on top in the eighth. Dom Nunez at the plate. So with those numbers you just threw out there, if there's a long inning and that starter is sitting for 17 minutes, is that why they struggle and they come back out sometimes? They go to sleep? 100%. That's why guys Someone get up need and try to, to stand move up. Yeah, some guys, we need to tell some of these guys that. Maybe that's why in the bullpen we're half asleep. I sat for a long time the first five innings. You know? Should make bullpen guys stand. Full count, two outs. Shallow left. Peralta there. And he makes the catch. Rockies a 7-1 lead in the desert in the bottom of the eighth. Eduardo Escobar having an outstanding year here in Arizona on the field and importantly in the community as he shows us his real life. Power, uno más. Okay. <laughs> okay, vamos, three swing. Wow. 
Salad la fuego power here, man. Another one. Run. Run, run, homer, double. <laughs> corre, 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 corre. Next. Oh. Hey. <laughs> I want to see this kid coming out of the country, uh, play with him, joking around, see a lot of smile, this kid, be happy. So it's the most important for me. So today is, is a big day for me. Blessing day, you know, so she's bringing me to here, give me opportunity and say this kid happy. So everything I can do it, eh, to come and visit the school here, I'm gonna do it because I love the smile of the kid. So. This was real life, Fogo Power, El de la Pica. Enjoy. He says he's powered by Fogo de Chao, the great uh, restaurant. For more exclusive behind-the-scenes videos from the Diamondbacks, subscribe to their YouTube channel at youtube.com slash dbacks. They've got a cool recurring feature with players called In Real Life. And in real life, the Rockies are going to the bullpen. Jesus Tinoco comes in. Bud Black talked about his young arms, the power arms, and Tinoco will take over for Tim Melville. He's got big shoes to fill. Melville was just incredible today and he's in line for his first major league win in his first major league start for about two seasons only his fourth major league start ever. And How many pitches Rich emergency call up I haven't uh, I was reading the app uh, the uh, drop in so I would I'm not logged into my MLB app one oh one thank you. That was a joy. I yeah, mean, that was the, awesome. The last thing I thought we were going to get today was, was 101 eight, pitch, eight innings or whatever. Was, seven, yeah. Seven innings, one run. Two hits, a run. A pitching performance that would have me up and dancing. Yeah. yeah so, man, it, it got your energy way up. Now, Jeremy and I have, have sat down now that we got up and I had, I did, engaged I, our brains. Yeah, I'm awake now. Set your watch to 17 <laughs> minutes, will you? How are you guys feeling? Avila, great. big shift for him, and the pitch is in. Now, all... All of this aside, the great effort by Melville and the 7 1 game for the Diamondbacks, this was a very important game. Every game from here on out, four back in the wild card. They had just peaked over 500 with the win last night 64 and 63. And they need to, to, Arizona does, figure out some momentum to bring with them because their next five games are crucial. And their road games at Milwaukee for three and in San Francisco against the Giants. Well so they have Milwaukee they go to San Francisco and then if you look at their schedule in September. Which I did with Tori Lovello. It's interesting because they play the Mets down the stretch at the very end they play St. Louis. They have Miami on the docket they have San Diego on the docket. So if they win the games they should win and then play well against the teams who are in front of them at this point. It is not out of the realm to believe this team to go to the playoffs. Well the amazing thing to me is all of it has been subtracted from the franchise in terms of players. Goldschmidt of course the headliner but you know A.J. Pollock a really good player. Grinky, of course a Hall of Fame career you would think. Woo. Avila opposite field. And gone. Got him. That ball went a long way. But like you were talking about earlier, Bernsey, if you can backspin that ball high in the air the way that these balls are coming off the bat right now, they're going to fly out of here. Because that ball went pretty good distance. Opposite field. And it looked like he hit that thing straight up. Yeah, that was pretty. But this is where the Rockies have had some issues. The back end of their bullpen. Their back end of their bullpen have been giving up a lot of runs really quick. And they. It's good they, shot. Good shot you, from the side right there, what you and I were talking about earlier. Yeah, that, that back cock. Yeah, that back cock. And I think that's why that you like you're saying he can hit that ball up, but the backspin it just keeps going. His last eight games, he's got three home runs. Here's Il Damaro. Vargas. 
and Avila has made it seven to two. That's down low and with more on Alex Avila. Here's Alexa Dat. Alexa. Rich, I talked to Alex Avila earlier and asked him, what does it say about this team that you lose Paul Goldschmidt and Zach Greinke and are still in the playoff hunt? And he said, it means we're resilient. Still feel like we have enough to compete. He said, coming into spring training, we weren't sure exactly where we were going to be in the standings, but we knew we were going to be in the mix if we were healthy. So losing Zach obviously was tough, but we're going to do it despite losing one of our best pitchers. A lot of the young guys stepped up. Carson especially. Carson Kelly is at the plate. So a lot of these pitchers in the rotation and the bullpen, especially the younger guys, came through and bought into the system right away. He said, we haven't made that run yet, but he said, expect it coming in the next six weeks because we got a great group of guys here who could put that together. Meanwhile, this weekend on his back, he's going to be rocking Parkman because about 10 years ago, he had a fan send him a split screen of him and Jack Parkman from Major League Two and said, y'all look so much alike, you might as well have this be a part of your, you know, uh, who you are. And so he's making that part of his Players Weekend uh, mantra. Oh, it's uh, David Keith is the actor. Parkman, of course, the terrific catcher, fictitiously for the Cleveland Indians. So good, I like it. Hey, we need to ask Alexa if the hot tub was working. When she was doing that pool shot out there, it looked like the the hot tub was working. Alexa, was it open? Yeah, it was. It was uh, in full swing, the hot tub and the pool. And the pool was actually heated. So <laughs> just in case you wanted to go dive in, it's all ready to go Who's for you. to do that? Well, 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 hold on. As long as you're not a Dodger. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. You can't do it. You can't get in the pool if you're a Dodger anymore. Yeah, and you can't pee in the pool either, you Jeremy. Can't, you can't <laughs> pee in the pool either. That's sense. <laughs> Uh, Alexa, did you dip your toe into the pool? Oh, I did. Oh I did the entire hit with both of my feet in the pool. You can't not get in the pool if you're back there. I didn't notice that. Did you really? I did. All right. Listen, Eric, I might not be as crazy as you, but every once in a while, I'll take a risk. That's, 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 a, girl. that's a safe statement. Um, risk it for the biscuit. Here, it's 7 2, Rockies on top of the Diamondbacks, and the Diamondbacks have hit two balls very hard. The Avila home run. And that line drive base hit. Yeah, Tinoco almost got his head taken yeah, off. Yeah, that was really close. Steve Foster, the pitching coach for the Rockies, is out. And now you've got the top of the order. You really can't fool around too much. I know your lead is five runs, but this is these are the Diamondbacks. This is Chase Fields. Yep. And we've got to get a replay of that uh, ball up the middle. Before that, though, we do need to remind you that MLB.tv is available for a lower price. $49.99, every out of market regular season game live or on demand. You receive access to MLB at bat premium. Visit MLB.tv for details. Tonoko now to face Dyson. Misses out infield pretty much straight up. McMahon off the line. And Story and Hampson looking for two. And Tinoco misses out. Here's that replay you're hoping Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Brilliant producing on demand. So uh, not as a close little as bit we dramatic. Yeah. A little bit dramatic. But I mean, you never know. If he's falling off the mound like that and he's spinning off, he's not in an athletic position. Sometimes your eyeballs play trick on you, but a little much. I think I'll agree with your first assessment. Sold the sizzle on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for TV. Yeah. I was I was wondering why it wasn't fired back right away. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even worth the replay. Yeah. I apologize for asking for it. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. Two one, and Dyson takes outside. Got the teeth of the order coming up. Marte, Escobar, Peralta. Christian Walker's been used as a pinch hitter, but Carson Kelly's available. Yes. Carson Kelly, the young Diamondbacks catcher, they got in the Paul Goldschmidt deal. He's been fantastic. Remember, you've got Adam Jones available, Wilmer Flores, some veteran bats there. Diamondbacks are going to make a push for this game. Well, if they don't 
if the Rockies don't bring in some guys to shut it down, you almost want to run this like you're in Colorado, where you got to bring in everything you've got to shut this down. You don't just let it mess around and be like, we got five runs to play with. You want it, you want to try to end this as quick as possible. Dyson, a little topper. No way you're going to get two. And there's the first out, and here comes Marte. Marte's home run to right. First run of the ball game. Diamondbacks, their two runs have been solo homers. There has been talk that the Diamondbacks would welcome an opportunity to build a new ballpark here in the Valley of the Sun. Chase Field obviously has been their home from the very start. A lot of big moments here. Of course, that World Championship 2001. Gonzo has been uh, on the chat room. And I'm sure he's had uh, plenty of people asking about that. His great memories from that 2001 season. Had a chance to play with Gonzo in 06. One of my favorite teammates I ever had. I was able as the voice of the Marlins to have a season worth of Gonzo. And what he meant to the clubhouse. Yeah. To his teammates was amazing the impact he had in just a season. Incredibly authentic. Yes. I think that's what we all strive for in life. I mean anytime there was a semblance of a holiday. Gonzo had the, the clubhouse decorated. The staff dressed appropriately. The jam job heard around the world. That's right. It's a strike. Yeah, you can see Marte react to it. Didn't like it. Because it was a ball, Rich. It was. It's been a pretty good game for Chris Siegel. He really hadn't missed much at all. But that one is just off. It counts two and two. That one pops out of the glove of Nunez. And now the count full at three and two. Marte is just 25. And of course, uh, I think when the trade was made initially, a lot of people said, well, the, the Mariners won that trade. They got Mitch Hanniger, who really busted out. Gene Segura. Well, Marte was the big piece that came from Seattle to here. And it, it's a great example of you still can't judge whether that trade worked one way or the other. You got to wait five, six years down the road to see what, what guys become, right? Yeah, but if you had asked this last year. Yeah, absolutely. Right, we're, sc we're screaming, Mitch Hanniger. Right. Let's hope that he finds health. Yeah, soon. that's uh, Mitty High School, West Catholic athletically. Absolutely. I mean, he is a joy to watch. So you're not going to see Bud Black mess around anymore. He's, he's going to go to his bullpen right here. He, he can't afford to do it. You need to get this win. And so Tinoco comes in, gets Justin out, the home run to Avila. Vargas with the hit. He got Dyson on the ground ball, but walks Marte. And you got Escobar up, and no one's better as a Diamondback in driving and runs this year than Eduardo Escobar. I think there's only one other guy better in baseball, and that's Rafael Devers in Boston. Three guys last night hit the century mark, and Escobar was one of them. Carlos Estevez ambling in from the bullpen. There's a multitude of content available for viewing on YouTube. What do you watch on YouTube if you are a major leaguer? Let's find out. I watch YouTube. I mainly watch just baseball highlights. That of Benny Garrett Hampton. All historic games. 3 2 pitch. Historic plays. Colorado's the national. 
National League champion. You learn a lot of stuff on YouTube. So there's so much good content on there. On YouTube, you could find things where guys would talk about pitch grips. Pretty cool to watch these two go over grips. When you're learning or trying to experiment with new pitches, like you could learn from some of the best. I actually have been teaching myself how to play guitar on some of the instructional videos on YouTube. I'm just on the road, bring my guitar with me, watch the song live, and then try to emulate that. I love watching practical jokes and different things like that that guys do. Boys will be boys. A hot foot has been scheduled. Ah, now <laughs> we found it. I'm a big do-it-yourself guy at home. Change out the garbage disposal, some toilets. We install some gutters ourselves this off season. I always use YouTube for that. I usually go down a lot of do-it-yourself archery hunting shows on YouTube. Did you ever just pull up some music videos oh, oh, for sure. front house? Rain delays, that's kind of all we do as a team. We just kind of sit there and watch, uh, watch music videos. <laughs> We watched some past uh, highlights and, and uh, some blooper reels that are on YouTube. Whoops. I've never seen that. Oh, no. Oh, he slips! What happened to you today? Well, an American Eagle landed on my shoulder. MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube. In Arizona, Diamondbacks, four out in the wild card, hoping for a sweep. Rockies though on top here seven to two Arizona making some noise Carlos Estevez is in and he gets Eduardo Escobar who's one for three with a double and Escobar swings and misses Ooh. 87 on the black right out the gate oof Estevez second on the team 55 appearances went two innings against the Marlins on Sunday. Takes over for Tinoco. The bullpen has been an issue. We talked about injuries with the rotation. Certainly, if the injuries in the bullpen have been significant. They tried to bolster the with the arms of Wade Davis, Brian Shaw, and Jake McGee. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's a, that's going to hurt you right there. And those are some big arms, and you, you should be able to depend on some, some, some of their ability to get big outs, and this just hasn't happened for us. Tapia into the corner, makes the catch, and that's out number two. And a good out to get if you're Estevez. You get Escobar, now you get Peralta here. It just shows you the importance when you try to get a back end of a bullpen to seal down games and they don't come through that shows you how important back end of bullpens are if they don't if they don't they can't if you can't seal down a game after the sixth inning man it, it, you're not it's going to be tough man you cannot give up a lot of runs late bro that's how you guys won the world championships right. in San Francisco yeah the core four we just came in and we we did our job we got it done quick and easy we just continued to do it and you know, obviously we had really good starting pitching that set us up, but we came in and pounded the zone and we got the job done. And now I draw straws for which ring I want to wear. <laughs> you know? Little Sam. looper. That's a, tough, that's a tough decision in the morning. <laughs> Tapia is there and makes the catch. <laughs> and Bud Black goes a little deeper in his bullpen and Carlos Estevez pays off. Can and I Rockies one? <laughs> hang on to that 7-2 lead. This date in baseball history. The Rockies here on top of the Diamondbacks by a score of seven to two. For this day in baseball history, we go back to 1990. The Phillies rising from the ashes, one of the best comebacks in baseball history. Bottom of the fifth, the Dodgers leading the Phillies three to one with the bases loaded, a little bouncer. They lead it four to one. Bases still full. It's one to center field. Dykstra long. To one, and that's through the drawn in infield. It's eight to one. And now the Dodgers are just having batting practice. The ninth Dodger batter, another base hit. Goodness, when it rains, it pours. The Dodgers hang a crazy eight, 11 to one. It's 11 3 Dodgers here in the ninth. Ball is slugged, so the Phillies will not go out quietly. Base hit. You're kidding, right? 11-6 to quote John McEnroe. You cannot be serious. Murphy with a shot to left. Two runs are in. A Rod Serling's 
special. And the tying run will come to the plate. Kruk can certainly swing the bat. It's hit on the fly. Back, 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 back. We're tied up. I don't believe I'm seeing this. Carmelo Martinez has a chance to put the Phillies ahead. A hopper against the wall. The Phillies have grabbed the lead 12 to 11. One last chance for the sort of Dodger Blue. Grounder to second. Over to Thon. And it's over. Look at the Phillies come out of the dugout. It's like they won the World Series. What a disastrous loss for the pennant contending Dodgers. And what a character builder for the Philadelphia Phillies. Awesome. Undoubtedly a Chris Berman call. The analyst on that game, my good friend Tommy Hutton. Yeah. So that was a, obviously an incredible night in Major League Baseball. If you're not following MLB on social media, you should be. Follow MLB on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Matt Andrees for the Diamondbacks. Can we get back to the YouTube clips we saw a couple uh, an inning ago where the guy said, do it yourself archery? Did anybody not catch that? That's, well, who else is going to do the archery? How do you do a do-it-yourself archery show? Well, when's the last time you repaired something in your car, and did you use a YouTube video or any type of instructional video for that? I did. I, I changed a window out that was broke. Well, I did. I pulled the thing. I, it was pretty good. Way to go. Yeah, I, I was pretty excited. I, I, I have used YouTube a few times to fix something in my washer. I was pretty pumped about it. Felt good. I saw Josh Colmenter in that clip talking about finding on YouTube different pitchers' grips. Yeah, that would be interesting for me. There's Daniel Murphy. I, I'm going to be really desperate if I got to go that route. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I don't, I don't, don't have anywhere think, else to you go. You I don't think Tim Melville at some point? <laughs> YouTube someone's YouTube curveball. YouTube someone's curveball. Tim Melville, you, you don't think I was digging through people's videos in the off season? <laughs> I was putting in, like, old VHS tapes uh, of Manny Ramirez and Edgar Martinez trying yeah. to be them. Yeah, how do I hit, like, these guys? Yeah, so that's a great story of how... J.D. Martinez uh, really changed his swing was by watching right-handed hitters like uh, Miguel Cabrera and yeah. others. Yeah, and man. Comparing him to him. There's the guy of the hour right there. Mm -hmm. And that's if you haven't been with us. Tim Melville, an emergency starter, a lifelong minor leaguer who had been to the big leagues a few times. Murphy dumps that in. It's fair. And Daniel Murphy on into seconds with a double. The ball kicks by, but he'll hold there. And Murphy with a double. Tim Melville seven innings two hits 101 pitches the start of his brief major league career. Maybe he should YouTube his grips after this game. That's right. I mean they're just duck farting them to death today. <laughs> he kind of looks like Melville. I tell you, Murph, Murph, man, I like Murph, man, but he's definitely taking on the first base hangout role. You know, he's definitely taking it on. He could still he's, hit. He could still hit, though, boy. He's. Mur Mur Where are you guys going? <laughs> Murphy, <laughs> Murphy with the double. Here's Tapia. Uh, I think we. Could, I think we I, need I, to stand up again. And yeah, yeah. You know, it's a good point. It's been 17 minutes. You know, stand up. Tapia bounces out. I think we're gonna have to start Murphy to third. The all Melville team. Yeah. And we're in our first player yeah. is Daniel Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this man. Is, you know what? With the injuries that, that they've had, he's going to get another start, right? I mean, he's oh, gonna, he yeah. could be here the uh, rest of the year. Another start? Yeah. yeah. This guy's a legend in Denver already. <laughs> I mean, wake up, Rich Waltz. Yeah. <laughs> legend. He's going to get another. That, well, now you got two guys that are probably going to be. One is for sure on the 60. The other one with the groin, I don't know if he'll be 60. You at least get him to where he can uh, get to September and not have to be on the DL or IL or whatever they're calling it now. But Here's story yeah. with the infield in. Murphy at third. Good chance he'll be here for the rest of the year if he keeps just throwing strikes. And a strike there by Matt Andrees. He's thinking, man, I'm going to be on a big league flight. I don't have to get up at 4 a.m. to catch this flight. I'm going to have some food on the plane. This is great. Had a real good talk with Matt Andrees and T.J. McFarlane and Archie Bradley before the game. Good dudes. Yeah. What'd you talk about? Oof. That was a flush right onto Vila's mask. They were interested in a golf adventure. Oh, I had 
Oh. Not a lot of give with those masks. That's the thing. Right? When you think a straight on one. It, look, that's a that's a something that baseball has tried hard in the last 10 years to perfect and improve is the shock absorption for catchers masks umpire masks as well because there have been some catchers careers that have been cut short by concussions Mike Matheny is probably the best example of that yep. I called it I believe I called his final game he was hitting the mask in, in Miami and um, it's something they're still working on and still trying to perfect they're better at it the, the equipment is better. Mm -hmm. Ball in the dirt, nice block by Avila. All right, you want a little Alex Avila? Yeah. Oh. And you can see he's using a different mask. This is back in 2011. Yeah. This is when the sparks flew right out. Wow. In these masks here, I feel like I don't know. I don't know if they do as much shock absorption, but why don't they do it like the football? My kids playing football this year and they kind of put a little almost like a pump in the back of the helmet and kind of could pump up part of the helmet to kind of create the shock absorption. Can they do that? I mean, they got to do something because I don't necessarily think foul balls really. I feel like if it doesn't come off, wouldn't it kind of almost rattle almost like rattle the cage a little bit in there with I know it's it's supposed to move around, but I feel like if it doesn't fly off the face it. The energy stays around the mask, right? Look, I'm not qualified yeah. to, to <laughs> either. Either am I? I'd love to, to, to go respond. there. I, I see what you're saying, but yeah. I mean, I just feel like if there's not, I mean, I've talked to Buster about it, and he he wears that that mask right there, and he says it's it's better. He thinks it's better than I've talked to other catchers. Like, no, I want that mask flying off my helmet because I don't want the energy staying around my my dome, but. I don't know if there is anything and I'm wanting to know why there is so many more foul balls in the mask. Is it because they're pitching up in the zone a little more. I, I just feel like a lot of guys are taking these balls in the mask. A lot like. It's pretty consistent how some of these guys are having to come out of the game and get their little concussion test done. Blackman fouls it back to the screen. A couple of RBI hits for Blackman lots of singles. For the Rockies, that was the key to getting to Mike Leake, who lasted just the five innings. Two outs here in the ninth. And Dries misses outside with a fastball. Rockies are headed to St. Louis. It's a four game weekend series. And then back home for that Atlanta game on Monday, and that is another game of the week on YouTube. Atlanta and the Rockies making up a, a rainout. At least I assume it was a rain out. It possibly could have been a snow out. <laughs> yeah. We've all kind of experienced that. Filthy. That's a nice breaking ball. Count one and two with two outs. And again, stick around for our post game show on YouTube. Our first target. We'll have a couple of interviews from the field. It's Tim Melville. And we'll get a little more on his story in his day. Have you noticed Andrews' mannerisms? He's got a lot going on there. Yeah, fidgety. Some guys have that nervous tick. They're just fidgety all the time. I mean, he keeps yeah. doing that and Black throwing Man those. Chases Avila, sweeps it over to first, and a nice escape job there by Matt Andrees. And so. Arizona now is down to their last three outs. Seven to two, Rockies on top. This is the game of the week, live on YouTube. And the rest of the year schedule is really good. We start with that game we talked about on Monday. Mets at Nationals has a lot on the line. The Rays are there twice. Indians at Angels. And the Cardinals will be here against the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks are hopeful that that game is meaningful. It probably will be for the Cardinals. Let's go back down to the field. Alexa Dad. Alexa. 
Rich, obviously not the start that the Diamondbacks were hoping for from Mike Leake, but there is some positive news as reinforcements are on the way. Robbie Ray hopes to join this rotation on Sunday. As we know, he's been dealing with that lower back injury. He said he's been on the DL the past two seasons, so the fact that he is not going to be kept out for too long is a positive for him. He threw a bullpen yesterday and didn't hold back 45 pitches, half of them from the strike, half from the windup. He said he felt good today. And that would have been the big concern if he was sore today. He's been doing a lot of preventative treatment and working on his pelvis alignment to make sure that his lower back does not cause any sort of issues for him. So uh, that is good news for the Diamondbacks coming up soon. All right. Thank you, Alexa. Sounds like a Ken Crenshaw, Nate Shaw special. Yeah. Ken he Crenshaw, the head trainer of the Arizona Diamondbacks, and Nate Shaw, who is a strength and conditioning coach, really big on pelvic alignment. Maybe that was my problem. I have bad pelvic alignment. My I'm hips a, were tight. I, I'm uh, I'm going to move along and <laughs> introduce the new pitcher for the Rockies. Speaking of pelvic alignment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rockies bullpen has come in and helped uh, Melville out. Jesus Tinoco got knocked around, but Estevez, Carlos Estevez, was good. And Jairo Diaz now. Big right hander came up from Triple A in late May has been here since and he's being asked to get the final three outs and put a cap on what will be an incredible day for Tim Melville. Yeah we're going to put Jairo Diaz in as our second member now of the all Melville team. He's got a beard though. And he has an undershirt so. Yeah, but there's just got to be a uniqueness about you. Yeah, good point. That says, I'm different. And I'm okay with being different. That's how you get on the All Melville team. Look at this guy. Ooh. And it looks like just from seeing him in the dugout that we will have him on our postgame show and get a chance to visit with him. And get a little bit deeper into the story and hear what his 24 hours, last 24 hours, have entailed in, in his arrival here and his day in the spotlights. Yeah, I can imagine the journey that this guy has been on this season. Yeah, well, not just this, this season, too, Eric, but uh, you know, 11 years in the minor leagues, the Long Island Ducks, all of that. Some great independent league stories, one of the best being. Daniel Nava St. Francis High School alum Santa Clara University who played for the Chico Outlaws. I was just about to say the Chico Outlaws. And he actually got cut from the Chico Outlaws. And my mom reached out to me and she's like hey she worked with Becky Nava in the real estate world and she said do you mind calling Daniel Nava and trying to encourage him he just got cut from the Chico Outlaws. I go mom. I'm playing in the big leagues. This dude just got cut from the Chico Outlaws. What do you want me to tell him? Yeah. Like, hang, hang in there, kid. Yeah. Keep trying. What did you tell him? No, we never touched base. Really? He got signed by somebody else before you could get to him. So get this. He goes back to the Chico Outlaws. They, they call him back. They're like, hey, you know, just kidding. We have a spot for you. Wins the batting title. Next thing you know, he gets signed by the Red Sox. Like two years later, He's up in his first major league at bat. And what does he do? Grand slam. The legend of Daniel Nava began after that. Put up some terrific years you didn't even need for the to Red talk Sox. To him. Oh, you didn't want to talk to me. Lamb strikes out. That one a dive bomber, 88 miles an hour. I'll bet you wish you had called him and, and, and at least No, no, no. We took we we okay. touch base, reached out in some capacity, never actually connected. And again, it was like but his story is even better because he went to Santa Clara. He got cut from Santa Clara. He's got one of the best underdog stories in all of baseball. Got cut from Santa Clara, went to College of San Mateo just because he decided he was going to play because he was a, he actually served as the trainer, like one of the trainers on the Santa Clara baseball team. They need to make a movie about Daniel Nava. <laughs> I'll produce it. Josh Rojas. Jeremy. You pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> OK. I mean, this is YouTube, man. Pays better than I thought. We need to pay for it. We, we can we, we can hawk your rings. <laughs> yeah. 
So this is the kid that's filling in, right? I mean, uh, Bud was, uh, Black was telling us this is Diaz. He's got the big arm, right? Good breaking yes. ball late. Talking to him earlier, he, he said he was going to go to him to close today if he could. He, had a, he just has that high velocity, high plus breaking ball. Saw it last at bat, right? We punched him out. But 97 down in the zone, that light, late little low slider. He's filthy. Davis being recently moved out of the closer role. Trying to find his way back. Rojas, 25 year old, grew up in this area, junior college here, and then played two years at the University of Hawaii. And rough spot was in the Houston organization. Hey, uh, earlier, Eric, you were talking about that collision with uh, Avila. Guess what? Oh, look at that. We found it. These aren't buckets. I mean, I'll give it to you. It was a good effort. It was a good effort. Dude, he, he's, he's a brick, man. Yeah, you're walking back Dude, going, I, ooh. That's I, I gave him oof. everything I had. Jeez, <laughs> uh, he definitely was, uh, had some parkman in him right there. Ahmed <laughs> is, uh, I mean, that dude wasn't budging. <laughs> no. The key to the collisions when they were still legal, which by the way, they are still now if the catcher has the ball and is blocking the plate. Right. right? But is you, you have to try to get underneath them. Yeah. Because if, if you go too high, it, it's, There's it's, helmet, tru it's trouble for the base. Gear, shoulder. Exactly. And it, Avila it, in that video, importantly, old school, left his helmet and his mask on. Yes. Yeah. That's Good point. Uh, it, it went flying. Actually, there's there's a few epic pics that you can find online of the mid collision that yeah. they got with his glasses like perfectly in the air. And then what it's one of my favorite pics is you have Ken Griffey Jr. is actually on deck. So you have Griffey yeah. there, glasses in it, the whole bit. It's swing. Ahmed drills it to center, caught there, ball game. And the Colorado Rockies beat Arizona 7-2. to two. And Tim Melville, the emergency starter, gets his first major league win, his first appearance in the big leagues in the last two years. Independent ball to start the season. Yeah, buddy. Yep. He's like, take a picture. Hey, man, we got you. I'm snapping. Get <laughs> I'll roll the video for you. He's like, I can't smile. I'm in a big league field. I got to wait till I get in the clubhouse. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to join the Tim Melville Fountain Club, you can go ahead and contact <laughs> Jeremy <laughs> Athol. Or He's serving as my secretary. Or, <laughs> or stick around because we'll have him on our post game show. 7 2 Rockies beat the Diamondbacks. MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Post game show begins, and it's all about Tim Melville, the 29 year old. Wentzville, Missouri is where he went to high school. It was a fourth round pick of the Kansas City Royals. Got to the big leagues, just a brief spot there. Made all of six appearances, three starts, three relief appearances, 11 minor league seasons, and he was an emergency call up there's Bud Black who so, had not met him until he walked through the door this morning. I, I got to be honest with you. I, I don't do a ton of games but I feel like a handful a year and this there's a few that stick out amongst all others. This this will be one of them. This is a, a really cool story real special story and you can see right now he's getting ready to, to talk to us. There's look, the at, smile. look at the smile. This is a really cool moment. A 7 2 win. And the, the long journey of Tim Melville to get back to the big leagues is complete today with seven innings, a run on two hits. And he is down there now. And uh, let's join him. Tim, have you got us? Yeah. Congratulations, first of all. This, I don't know, even know where to start on this. Congratulations. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, the last 24 hours, can you take us through the timeline of when you knew? You were going to start and how you got here and how that worked. I had a call from Glenn Allen down there uh, yesterday morning. Came to my hotel room, gave me the news. And then last night I got in around, around 9.30. So I had a good night's rest. And um, 
You know, I know a few guys on the team, so today it was mostly a lot of hellos and getting ready for the game, going over the game plan with Steve Foster. And, uh, you know, I've had Dom all year in Albuquerque, so it's been great to uh, you know, kind of execute our game plan, what we've been doing down there today. Hey, Tim, Rich wanted to start with the whole past 24 hours, whatever. I want to start with the Long Island Ducks, my man. <laughs> yeah. Take me back for your adventure from the Long Island Ducks to here today. Well, kind of a cool story. Me and my girlfriend actually came to a game here in April. So <laughs> kind of gives you an idea where I was at with my job, Jeez. you know. <laughs> my whole job situation. Um, but I was fortunate enough to land with the Long Island Ducks. I was there two years ago. I mean, we have Wally Bachman and Ed Lynch, Ed Lynch pitching coach there. And, um, you know, just had a great run there. I only had two starts and then, you know, fortunate enough for the Rockies to pick me up. And, you know, before we go anywhere else, obviously thank you to the Rockies for giving me the opportunity today. And, uh, you know, thanks to my parents. I know they're watching and pretty proud of me right now. So did you good have, to see them. Did you have enough time to get any family members here? I know um, it's not your big league debut. You'd, you'd made some yeah. starts and some relief appearances. But this is pretty cool to get back here two years ago. It was your last major league appearance. Yeah, um, fortunately, no uh, family, but a lot of friends. You know, this is my off-season spot. So I have a lot of friends right now watching. Um, you know, I work at a barbecue restaurant last off-season. So Dude, a lot that of those is, guys It's getting come better in. and better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun. I mean, this is getting awesome. <laughs> I mean, we, are start, we already got T-shirts made of you up here. Oh, yeah. And, and, I mean, and now we got barbecue the, working. And Do you guys have uh, this one yet? Oh. Oh, no, but we're no, oh, I don't. Yes, we did no, that. we want a different T-shirt. We got the Tim Melville T-shirt oh, okay. working. We got a fan club working up here, man. Yeah, and, if, I, uh, if I can plug Little Miss Barbecue, you know, <laughs> you anybody's, plug whatever you want, bro. anybody's in Scottsdale uh, area, I uh, want some good barbecue. Head over there. Scott Holmes will right, take so it. Wait, 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 wait. Hold no, no, no. We're not going to let this pass. So, what were you doing working in the barbecue shop? You know, a lot of guys like play golf in the afternoons, at, you know, in the off season, and I was just like tired of that. So. I, I fortunately live close to one of the top barbecue places in the country, and I'm a big food guy. So, you know, they they uh, let me do an interview process, and I kind of told them my resume, 10 years of minor league, major league baseball, and uh, some cooking experience. But they, they let me get on board. So you and, cooking uh, so you, there? Yeah, cooking or serving, yeah, little, serving, little serving little tables? A little smoking of the barbecue. We got you, brisket, you know, beef Team ribs, barbecue ribs, on Melville. Everything. I mean, we're, we're, and, uh, oh, man. This yeah. is awesome. A lot okay. of fun. Okay, let's talk about your <laughs> offense today because you did not have a major league hit. You were 0 for 2. Yeah. You got your first uh, professional hit this year in the yeah. minors. Yep, so, first, first this year in the minors. So is that your bat, first of all? Did you borrow that? Yeah, Chichi. Chichi Gonzalez hit me okay. up with the bat. Ah, very so nice. I might have to buy it off of him. And the bunt. Yeah, the bunt was great. Great yeah. technique. Did you now? Did you know the signs, or did someone whisper in your ear, "You're going to bunt, and this is what we're going to do"? Uh, well, yeah, they came over and told me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I, that bat, it appeared a little short. What's what size was that? It seemed short. I don't, I don't know. Probably a 33 and a half or yeah, something. Like that. I mean, I'll get a bigger one if it makes me look better. No, no, but, no. Uh, dude, you're good. Don't, you're getting don't nuts. change don't a change single anything. thing. Quick, yeah. uh, quick shout out to Tim Doherty down in uh, AAA. They really got my rhythm going and everything, and uh, you know dedicate that hit to you know all my family too was there a moment in your career and look you have what 11 parts of 11 years in, in the minor leagues yeah. including this year were there moments that you thought about giving up that you know maybe you you you'd come to the end of the line or, and, and if so what what kept you going in, to this point yeah. you know I'm sure a lot of people gave up on me but never gave up on myself it's always win or or learn you know you're never losing and, um, you know, I think there will become a, a day eventually when I want to get out of baseball. But for now, I'm doing great, and I'm excited to keep learning and be a part of this great team and kind of learn this culture here. You know, there's a lot of excellent talent on this team, so I'm excited to be here and be a part of this and have some fun. It's Dude, awesome. you, ha you had that slider working, and yeah. Jeremy and I were up here talking about it. Like, you could have told them it was coming. And I, it, it was you were starting down the middle of the plate to the left-handers. It was breaking down and in. They just they couldn't touch it. Has that always been your bread and butter pitch? This year it's been uh, better than others. I, I feel like I've uh, I've been able to command at both sides of the plate. So you'll see me backdoor some lefties or try to get underneath their swings. Um, but, you know, I'm a four-pitch guy. I like to think that way and pitch anything at any time to keep them on their toes. 
Did you throw an EFIS curveball? <laughs> yeah, I got a few of those in there. You know, that was you, awesome. You watch, you know, you watch Cranky and those guys do it. And you're like, yeah, but I mean, so this cool. is even getting better. Like you're coming back, you get an emergency start, and you're like, I saw Grinky do this one time. I'm gonna try <laughs> no, it on no, my no, first no. big league game back. I mean. uh, honestly, that wasn't the first time I threw it. So don't, you know, I'm not just throwing stuff against the wall out here. So, uh, <laughs> so hey, take me back to April. You're in the stands yeah. with your girlfriend here. They're, yeah, they're playing Boston, I believe. Where Where did you sit? Uh, right behind third base over here. So just, uh, just hanging out. We're gonna go out to the ballpark. Yeah, hanging out, date, watching the date game. Night, ballpark and yeah, had some. You know, maybe here. some TGI Fridays up top. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but you know, in those situations, you always see yourself on the field. Um, I don't actually like watching a lot of baseball. I'll come out every once in a while, enjoy a game, but I'd rather play. So the whole time, I was actually like, man, I. It would be great to be here. And, um, you know, it's kind of a dream come true, so to speak. So, well, it's a pretty cool moment. Look, congratulations. Thank you. It's your first Major League win. Yeah. And you know the tradition is probably a, a involves a, a shopping cart, a shower, and a lot of beer. Yeah. So get in there and enjoy it. You certainly deserve it. Savor it. Savor it. Savor it. Hopefully some barbecue. Oh, my friends brought I hope they so brought I don't some know. in. And we'll good see. luck in your next start. Yep. Thank you, guys. Nice right. to meet you, by the way. Nice job. Hey, and, and I'm, the, I'm the president of your fan club. <laughs> Thank you. Tim, I'm not kidding you. Hopefully. Tim Melville fan club. Yeah. I'm Hopefully all chat in. again soon. Awesome, dude. Yeah. Inspiration, man. See you guys. All right. You, know, so you, you watch what we watched, and you listen to that, and you wonder how many other guys like him are down there that just need an opportunity and, and to step out onto a bigger stage. Yeah, I, you know, I've always said, Jeremy, that there's no such thing as the 4A player. I mean, that, that label will come on somebody who gets a shot in the big leagues and doesn't perform at the big league level with a limited sample size. But it's always been my belief if you give that person a larger opportunity, eventually you will see his talent come out and come to fruition. But in this case right here, I mean, let's be honest. Like, one of the reasons that this story is so great is that this dude had a five ERA in AAA. Right. You guys can sugarcoat it all you want with the ballparks and everything else, but when we sat in Bud Black's office earlier today, Bud Black's like, hey, I don't know what to expect. I just met him. 90 fastball, curveball, changeup. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little slider. He had no clue. And so here we are. Our entire broadcast was made today because of one dude that had this opportunity grabbed the bull by the horns and said boom let's go yeah and you know I think there are guys down there I think what it shows a lot of guys if they're watching the game or if they're even have any understanding of what just took place today it's not about 97 it's not about a uh, plus plus 80 you know 92 mile hour cutter on the black it's about pitching and it's about pitching the confidence about throwing strikes it's about not nitpicking the strike zone throw the ball in and out change change eye, you know change the eye level change arm angle this kid did what he did today was show that it does not matter about stuff. It matters about going out there and giving everything got and executing pitches. And you can play this ball game and you can play it well. And there are other guys down there that are waiting to do it. They do need the shot. Some guys aren't going to get it. But if you get it, come up here and be confident when you do get it. If you just jumped on and you missed today's game and saw that interview and you're curious to see what uh, he looked like, here's the highlights. And we'll uh, take you through and show you. Now, remember, Arizona won the first two games of this series and they had Mike Leak on the mound but uh, Rymel Tapia kind of set the tone. This was a hit the ball all over the ballpark day for the Rockies offense. Yeah they weren't exactly banging the ball but they found some holes early on. The Diamondback shift worked against them. It's actually been working for them really well through the course of this season but uh, not today with Mike Leak and uh, he was the uh, unfortunate beneficiary of a, a lot of dinks and doinks. Well, that's a doink, but it was uh, good enough for a run. A story came across. It was 2 nothing at that point, but a double play grounder from Yonder Alonzo. And enter Tim Melville. Now, Jake Lamb sent this one to right, and you thought, trouble, Charlie Blackman. It would have stayed in the yard, but it would have meant a couple of runs. Blackman makes the catch. All of a sudden, Melville starts to roll. Yeah, a game of inches, right, Jeremy? It is, and it's what you need to see from your from your defense is to give, give, give me a little hope when I come out there and give me a little confidence, and I'll keep rolling. And to Eric's point, you get dinked and dunked and chip away, chip away. Ball's finding holes everywhere. This one picked up top spin. No one was there. Guys scoring. I mean, a frustrating outing for, for Mike Leak today. He did not pitch all that bad. 
but it ended up not working out for him. And Give uh, Nunez a little love right here too. The kid from Elk Grove, California, so yeah. did well. Really well today. And I like the fact that he, that as uh, Melville, Ooh. Melville talked, and that's Melville single in center field, first big league hit. That he and Nunez worked together in Triple A, so it was comforting to have a catcher back there that he'd worked with all season long. How about more Melville here? Oh, just a yacker right there. Even the backup one pops him up. 11 straight outs at one point. Just continuing to throw that back foot breaking ball. Guys could not do it. They could not hit it. Remember, the dates, 21st of August, 2017 was his last big league start two years ago. Didn't look like it. What you guys need to remember is that this dude was sitting in the stands at a game in April <laughs> and working at a barbecue shop in the off season here in the Phoenix area. Digest that for a second. That's amazing. All right. This is the Nunez kid that you were talking about, Dom Nunez. Pride of Elk Grove, California. And this is the first and third bunt. That's a sweet play. Yeah, man. Yeah, Just yeah. perfect. I like this play if you can execute it like that. A lot of it has to do with Daza at third base getting a terrific jump coming home to score. Yeah, and you get you force that first baseman down, and he's got no no choice but to turn around and get the out at first, and that scores the run. Diamondbacks finally get on the board, and this uh, the blemish against Melville. He had retired 18 of 19, 11 in a row at one point, and the Marte homer in the sixth inning was the first run and his only blemish, Melville's, on the day. And it was a 1-2-3-7. And that finished his day at 101 pitches in just his fourth major league start. Thinking about barbecue right there on that last out. Barbecue and a beer shower, Jeremy. <laughs> Diamondbacks uh, had an uprising. Alex Avila, still potent at the plate. Apo Takalicious. Bottom of the ninth inning, Jairo Diaz. A one, two, three inning. And the Rockies avoid the sweep. Tough one for the Diamondbacks. They fall back to 500 at 64 and 64. And the Rockies at 58 and 69. After the game, our Alexa Dat caught up with Charlie Blackman, who went two for five. All right, Charlie, putting together a 10-game hitting streak, two for five day for you after a rough July. How important is that? Uh, I, yeah, that's pretty good. I think we did a good job today, uh, and we, you know, like those two hits helped us score runs, which is the important thing. Um, yeah. So when you have something going like your home road splits currently and then you're able to produce away from cores, what does that mean for you? Uh, that's really important. You know, I think that's part of being a consistent player. That's something I strive to be. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, my team counts on me every day, so I want to be good no matter where we play. How about the debut of Tim Melville? What an incredible game for him. I just saw you smiling in the dugout this entire game. Seven innings, one run, the fact that he's able to do it also at the plate. What does that say? I, I don't know if he slept last night. Like, he might have been on a plane all night, uh, showed up. You know, you don't really know what you're going to get, right? First time up this year. And uh, he just went out and did an amazing job. I mean, he threw strikes from, from the first inning. and. Build a little confidence and and just kept it rolling. And then got a big hit to knock in a run. I mean, what a day for him! Did you know him well before he walked into the clubhouse? I, I saw him pitch when I was rehabbing in AAA, and I you know I thought he battled and he was a grinder and and you, you don't know exactly how that plays in the big leagues, but sure enough, he, he had a great day and and uh, what one run, seven innings. I mean, that's that's good anywhere. Being a grinder is kind of the definition of this team this season, huh? Yeah, we're just. Uh, showing up every day, doing the best we can. Um, you know, we've had a few guys get banged up, and and we're just trying to overcome. All right. Thanks, Chuck Nasty. Thank you. Thank you, Alexa. And so, uh, for Charlie Blackman and the Rockies, they head to St. Louis, uh, and then they've got that game at home against Atlanta. That's a YouTube game uh, next Monday afternoon. 
that's for the Rockies. That's the best that they can do it, with all the pitching injuries. Um, they lost Freeland. They lost Gray today to the 60 day injured list. Uh, they can be spoilers and with their offense and uh, their ballpark they can spoil a lot of postseason hopes between now and the end of September. They can and, and that's what teams like the Rockies in this situation will want to do and they've done it. They've done it before quite a bit. You got to go into Colorado yet teams coming in going into Colorado late in September the ball flies big time in September in Colorado and so these playoff guys coming in trying to get a spot or trying to get a wild card spot. Oh man you got to play the Rockies. Oof, they, they can be a little bit tough on you late in September there. Yeah I think we got to remember this is a team that went to the postseason the, two, pa the past two years, years right. Yeah. So yeah. I mean this they're filled with stars. This isn't like the, the Tim Melville are, are running around that Rockies right. locker room. I mean, yeah. we're, we're talking about big time. We didn't see it or not today. Yeah. Right. Dan, you know, Dan Murphy, we saw later. But I mean, it's just, you know, one guy after another. Um, these guys are veteran dudes that are going to post up each and every single day. And there's a lot to play for at this point. And I don't see them rolling over. They're not going to. The Arizona Diamondbacks, on the other hand, their backs against the wall at this point because there's so many teams right there, be it the Brewers, be it the Cardinals, be it the Cubs, just fighting for those wild card spots, obviously in the New York Mets. And they're in the thick of it. If you look at their whatever they're supposed to be based on run differential, they should be at 70 wins right now. Yeah, right. So they have the fourth best run differential in the National League. Yeah, man. It's these are the type of games, all due respect to our dude Tim Melville, they gotta win. Yeah. Right. So yeah. if you're Tori Lavello, this this one hurts a little bit. Now, that being said, I mentioned the schedule earlier. If they can focus on the schedule, get back to, quote unquote, winning the games they should win, they're going to have a chance like their their destiny. Is, it's it's in their own hands. And I think that's all you can ask for for a team coming to. And they got to win in the West. Yeah. Well, speaking of Tori Lavello, he's speaking right now. Let's go down and join him. It's hard, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what happened today. Um, a couple situations we didn't win the margins, and that's what we uh, what we get used to doing around here. And um, you know, their pitcher comes on board last minute and, and goes seven really good innings, and we we didn't have a chance to uh, really make some adjustments, or we didn't make the necessary adjustments to, to attack them the right way. I don't, there was really no. Um, Nothing offensively that we got going. I know Cattell hit the home run, but we didn't get a chance to build some innings and um, just never got clicking offensively. I know Mike um, was removed from the game a little bit early. Uh, we, I chose to go with the offensive route uh, in the, after his fifth inning, and uh, it unfortunately um, you know, couldn't get him deeper into the game. I thought he had some good innings, but there were some mistakes that, that were made. I know in the first inning, a uh, little bit of, of an unfortunate um, um, situation with a lot of ground balls that went through the infield. Uh, and I thought that the, the crucial inning was a three run. I think it was the fourth where we were down at the bottom of the lineup there and we, we, we had a chance to wiggle out of that. But unfortunately, they scored some runs and broke the game open at that point. But like I said, I think the theme here is we never really got anything going offensively today. What was Melville doing that was frustrating? Um, yeah, it looked to me like he was making making the crafty pitch when he needed to and then going out of the zone and we were chasing. Um, I don't know what our, our swing percentage was on balls out of the zone, but I'm imagining that it was a little bit higher than it has been um, in, in a while. But uh, maybe there was some effectiveness there, late, late life, late depth on some, certain pitches. I haven't heard any comments up to this point. I'll, I'll get a chance to look at it. but. I think we went out of the zone a little bit too much, a little bit too much chase. And you know, we feel like um, we had enough time to prep for him. There was a quick changeover from Gray to him today, or late, late last night. And uh, we have a team of people that pounced on that. As soon as we got the information, we got the, we got the, the data, and, and all the output give, was given to the players. Uh, so that, that really was an excuse. I think we were prepared. We just went out of the zone too often. What time did you find out? I found out at about 11.15 last night. And then um, obviously pass that along to, to to my team of people built around me, and they, they got to work on it. I think first thing this morning, everybody had their game plan in hand and delivered the messages to the players. Was there anything different about the way he was going about it than what you guys were expecting? That game? Um, 
I think he didn't use as much spin as we anticipated. I think it was really a changeup that was in play. Uh, we knew that there was a changeup, uh, but we 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 knew that the velocity was going to be um, fringy average, but it was going to be command falling out of the zone. Um, so we we predicted it, and it was pretty close. Eric Burns pointed out the run margin, and right now. Uh, Arizona's got a good one, but it hasn't turned into wins and losses, or wins, it's turned into more losses. Here's one of the reasons why. Not only are they bad in one-run games, but look, against the National League West, in their division right now, they're 11 games under in the West. Yeah, that's really weird, Jeremy. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The West is not the strongest this year outside of the Dodgers. So you'd think that Arizona, who does have a terrific run differential, should be able to take care of um, you know, the other teams in the West. But unfortunately, it hasn't happened to this point. It was interesting what Tori Lavelle was saying, that they knew what they were getting. And velocity, fringy average. Uh, he referenced the changeup. I, I think if he goes back and looks at the tape a little bit more, he's going to realize that it wasn't necessarily the changeup. It was the slider that really got his guys and neutralized the left-hand hitters. And the one thing that he... Tori Lavelle made a very good point. He's like, I think we chased out of the zone a little bit more. I think that's something that you and I you know, kind of weirdest reference to when he was talking, if they were to attack him again and they faced Tim Melville again, the approach would be, hey, look, when you have that ball that's starting over the middle to inner third of the plate, if you're a left-handed hitter, lay off. You don't want that pitch because that's the one that's going to break underneath your bat, and it just looked too good for them because of that quote-unquote fringe average velocity. Yeah, but the one thing about that breaking ball, it's hard to lay off if he can throw it for a strike early in the game, which he did throw a lot of those strikes just on that inside yeah. quarter on that back knee for a called strike. And when you have that, man, the difference between a called strike breaking ball and one on the back foot is only about – you know, six inches higher, you know, a little lower. And I, you just don't have a lot of time. If you've got them into swing mode, you're going to have that happen. But they, the, the league is going to make an adjustment because it's not like they're going to ignore him now. Now he had such a good start where now everybody's got to wake up and be like, well, wait a minute here. We can't allow this guy to get on a roll. Like, we, we got we to pay attention to him. And But the Diamondbacks have a, have a big, big situation ahead of them. They have to start winning in the West. They cannot – continue to lose in the West because the Giants are in this wild card play as well. They're going to come after them. They're in the West. They have some games. The Giants just came in and beat them a little bit. I mean, you have different teams here that they have to win uh, and they have to beat and they need to show that. Well, we know how uh, Tim Melville did. How did we do? It's something we do at the end of each show. We go back to the very top and we were uh, wondering if there would be some Melville magic. And guess what? There was more than you could ever imagine. Filthy. You're right. That was the one that you were talking about, Jeremy, that first pitch that we saw. Yeah, it caused it's, them to swing at that one. Yeah, that's the one out of the zone that Tori Lavello was referring that's to. Borderline strike. You're right. That's the borderline strike. Look, it's Tim Melville's world, and we're just living in it. Let's be honest. First major league hit, borrowed a bat, certainly borrowed a helmet, maybe even the batting gloves. Dropped down breaking ball, too. And the first and third bunt. Executed perfectly. Joe Madden is smiling somewhere over that. Now, Alexa had the great story on the rallying cry for the Rockies to just keep grinding. And they did. And this was a grinded out offensive deal. There wasn't a whole lot of launch angle involved in this offensive attack. And both Jeremy and Eric have made the point that if you're the Diamondbacks, these are the games that you have to win when you're four games out of the wild card. Well, Alex Vila goes up talk delicious right here. And of course, we saw Marte go bridge earlier in the game. But understand this, too. Right, we've sat here, as you can see, the Melville resume, the celebration. But I, the, the Diamondbacks, they basically, they have to do now everything in their power because we talked about the Rockies and all they lost in their pitching. The Diamondbacks are four out of five starters down. And right? four of their starters are rookies. Right. Think about that. Four of their starters are rookies. The one thing I liked, and we talked about this a tiny bit during the game, but I had the chance to talk to those dudes, right? And after the golf adventure explanation right. to them, uh, we got into just clubhouse chemistry and the synergy and everything that's going on within that clubhouse. And they said, you know what? Like this year, in, in general, it's just been 
awesome. And they feel like they generally have guys pulling for each other. The culture that Tori Lovello has created is next level. There's a reason why he has the John Wooden pyramid of success in, in his uh in his office. I was and, wondering and, when you're going to work that in. Well, it, look, it's not just song and dance. I, I, I know I, some <laughs> of it, sometimes you could go ahead and say, Sly, watch. he buys in. And not only does he buy in, but he's getting his players to buy in. And I, I think the right guy's in charge. I don't, I'm just not sure if they have the personnel that can eventually take them to the postseason. Look, they gave up so much in the offseason and even this season with Goldschmidt last year, Granke this year. The fact that they're 500 and even in this discussion in the race to me is, is pretty amazing. Agreed. It is amazing because they don't have, like you said, the personnel that everybody would look at and say, these guys are going to go to the playoffs and they're in it. And they've got guys that have stepped in. Walker has stepped in for Goldschmidt and putting up similar numbers that Goldschmidt's putting up. You got Marte, you got Escobar. All these guys are coming in and they're thinking if they would just have their rotation that they started with, it would be a whole lot different story that right, right now. And it, it, they need to get those guys back and healthy. Now, you saw just before he came on with us, the first guy to get there was Bud Black and congratulate him. Let's go down to the Rockies uh, clubhouse and hear from their skipper. Tim Melville in the blue notes, so just find it. <laughs> you know, uh, I told him after the game, uh, you know, that was a timeless. Uh, he pitched. I mean, that's a, a throwback, uh, throwback pitching style game. I mean, that, he could have pitched in the 20s, could have pitched in the 50s, 70s, 80s. Then the 90s, it gets a little, gets a little different in this day and age. You know, the, you know, uh, you know, velocity and everything. But man, that was that was fun to watch. Uh, you know, a guy that understands how he gets his outs, how he changes speeds, what, and he stayed just within himself and did his thing. But it was, it was beautiful. Yeah, he did. He pitched in the 80s, actually, the upper 80s. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm a huge fan of Bud Black. I, I having a chance to sit down with him, obviously, earlier today. Had other opportunities to pick his brain about certain things, and, and he is dead right. That dude today could have pitched in any era. And you throw the way that Tim Melville threw, you're going to get outs, Jeremy. Yeah, you are. You're going to pound the strike zone with your fastball, top to bottom fastball, breaking ball late, back footing it when you need to, throwing your change up on the other side of the plate, back doing your breaking ball. That's pitching. That'll win ball games. I don't care what area you're in. Hey, guys, uh, enjoyed it. Birdsey, good luck Thanks. in Reno. That's Thanks, a good-looking good golf shirt you got there. Yeah, it's really yeah. nice. <laughs> gave you that. <laughs> I got a, uh, thank you for that, Rich. I'm All like, right. I'm digging the rest of your wardrobe, too. <laughs> hey, here's the, uh, the schedule on YouTube. That's a great matchup. Braves and Rockies, Mets, Nationals, all the way through September, finishing with the Cardinals back here in the desert against the Diamondbacks. And, of course, the Rockies and the Braves coverage starts with the pregame show, 2.30 Eastern on Monday. For Eric Burns, Jeremy Affelt, and Alexa Datt, our entire MLB Network YouTube production crew here in Phoenix, I'm Rich Waltz. What a day for the 29-year-olds. Tim Melville, first major league win, first major league hit, and the Rockies take down the Diamondbacks 7-2. Goodbye from Phoenix. Thanks for watching the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube. Kick it!